Hello and welcome to another day of the LCK. We got DRX up against Gen G on this very special day. It is me, Valdez, with Chronicler, the special uh, remote edition of the LCK. As you guys might have heard, we have been out, unfortunately, with COVID. We have been sick for a while, but finally we got everything working. We are ready to go. And we snuck in right before the end of the week. How are you feeling now, Chronicler? I am feeling much better. Uh, I'm sure the same goes for yourself. There's a reason why we've been quarantined for a week. Uh, but over the last few days, I've been uh, I've been feeling great. I've been still watching everything of the LCK and uh, actually being able to get back at it with you is very exciting. And we got some great matches today as well. Yeah, we absolutely do, especially this first one. I think the second one uh, might be a little bit sad yeah, unless Freddy Brion yeah. is going to pull out some of their, you know, old magic but uh the first one absolutely right drx versus genji let's get into the points of the match and check out what we do have in store for this first one and overall don monkia uh, getting upset by a drx looking a lot better um aided by what has been a continuous po uh, point of power for them the top side specifically the solo laners looking incredibly good uh, and that combined with the consistent form of deft and barrel his ingenious uh, attention being paid to drafts and how they play around the map um, has been enough to overthrow Don Monkia, which uh, everyone, including I think all of us, expected to take that victory against DRX comfortably. Uh, Gen G feels like a whole different caliber. We've seen a lot of the struggle that has been plaguing Don One, but it's not impossible. This team still very, very strong. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just a little bit of inconsistency, I would say, for DRX. One day they're uh, not looking so good the next day they do uh, very very well so we'll have to see genji's win streak was broken by in fact angry uh t oh no genji is the one that's angry but t1 looked a bit angry as they were taking down genji you know just trying to recreate what they have been able to do many many times in the past against genji and now genji perhaps angry are trying to retrieve first place how will they perform today well they're definitely the favorites coming into this match as you were kind of highlighting but uh, we'll have to see how that T1 match does affect them as well. And a really high priority pick. Uh, these two junglers are, are also some of the few that play the champion at all, but both of them have looked incredible on it. Obviously, Edge is going to go to Peanut, who has been incredible in terms of his early game and the amount of enabling he's been able to do for the rest of his team. Um, but Pioshik also looking a lot better on it. Uh, both really love picking it into either Viego or specifically the Wukong, which also frees up uh, a lot of the priority that you get in bans, uh, so you don't have to ban away the Wukong, you can instead just go for the Poppy, and that has been very, very successful. So expecting that to be very high priority here, uh, prio here. Yeah, especially with all the action down in the bottom lane that we have been seeing, even without the Poppy, we saw yesterday, you know, flashes with Trundle to make uh, early ganks happen. It's just the way it's going on down in the bottom lane nowadays. It is a war ground. So we'll take a look at some of the stats here. Genji still with the highest average win time, I should say the shortest. Um, and, you know, even though they did suffer that loss against T1, still some really great stats across the board. DRX, not bad stats either. Main thing for Gen.G, of course, is just that uh, they lost against T1, which happens, but outside of that, still look incredible. Was taking a look at the DRX lineup here, a team that definitely has been performing very, very well overall. They have had a number of really cool inventive drafts. King and Spawn in particular has been absolutely amazing. Uh, and King and Zeka really leveling up is what separates this roster from the somewhat inconsistent DRX that we had in spring. Some of that inconsistency is still there, but overall they are much better able to match even the strongest of opponents. Yes, yeah, definitely been a really nice look for them. Uh, Deft has been popping off in a huge way. Uh, Barrel, I think, is really trying his best to return to top Barrel form. And uh, he is certainly a guy that uh, he, he really touts himself as like a, a master of the game, uh, a real student at the same time, though, as well, always studying, always looking for new builds and always trying to lead his team in the right direction. I think that individual performances from a lot of the different members on the squad as well are really helping bring this team to new heights. And talking about new heights, even with their loss, 
of course, against T1 Gen.G still are a team that is looking incredibly strong. Uh, aided by Chovy's form, which is incredible. Uh, the amount of inventive picks that Lahans, most notably Singe, has been able to pull out. And especially over the last couple of weeks, uh, Doran looking way better. Peanut has just been good since the beginning of the split, but Doran was, I'd argue, a pretty clear weak point within the lineup of Gen.G. And even though they lost against T1, uh, I was expecting Doran to be a major weakness, and all things considered, he looks pretty good, and if that weakness is taken away, then Gen G becomes a very hard team to take down. Yeah, absolutely. And as we know, T1 are an incredibly strong team now, kind of reaching their uh, former height in terms of play and level of play. But Gen G were still able to take that first game very dominantly. Uh, it was a bit of a stomp, right? And T1 eventually woke up and took the series, but Genji at least proving that they can take down that strong team, they can battle with the best of them. And absolutely, as we've kind of been hinting at, this is going to be the key player matchup. The two supports with, uh, you know, some crazy picks between them, the Mumu we've been seeing a lot, the Singed, obviously. And, you know, the stats, I, I would, even without the stats, I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> we should have these guys be the key players. Yeah, the most notable difference between how they play is looking at the um, duo proximity, even though percentage-wise it's not that far off. You can see that Lahans has been um, a little bit more proactive than Barrel has been. But both of these two players have in common that they are very important for the overall creativity of their teams. Something that T1 also has done in the past a lot is rely on carry as champion pool. Um, in case of Beryl, I think he has been extremely outspoken about like being up to like 3, 4 in the morning to study LEC, to make sure that his team's drafts against Don One were the best that they could possibly be. Um, whereas for Lahans, it's the, the mad genius, truly, that uh, has been really pushing forward Genji. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As yes. uh, a really fun uh, barrel sign there, even had depth on it, the alpaca has a nice little cameo. Lots of Gen G fans here. <laughs> that says uh, Gen G and HR. <laughs> Everybody getting over here, even the Gen G staff coming down to the studio to watch Gen G potentially get back on the horse here and uh, try to pick up that seventh win. But DRX, they're a really tricky team. They are very strong in their own right. And even though we do give Gen G the edge in this matchup, I would not be surprised if it goes to three games, if DRX pull out some weird picks, or if they just outplay them in one game. I mean, they are good enough. Yeah, it's it's the, the real test for DRX would be seeing whether they can be consistent enough over the course of a series to take down Gen G. Because even though individually the yeah. players have looked a lot better, there is still a really big mismatch in the jungle, in my opinion, where Peanut is uh, been playing so incredibly well, and Pioshik is good if he can get going early, but otherwise he doesn't really have the greatest of impacts. And as well as I've uh, been um, um, enjoying Zekka's play overall, uh, he's not Chovy. <laughs> Chovy's play has been uh, <laughs> yeah. kind of dumb uh, in, in a very positive way. Uh, incredible, incredible laning presence, <laughs> which has... Well, I, that's, that it, I can see DRX win, but if it's a TO, I'd be shocked mm -hmm. about this. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're both on the same page with that. As uh, we are getting ready to jump into the pick ban here, Poppy is the first ban. So DRX say, we don't want to first pick that. We know it's good, even on blue side especially. I mean, the amount of dives you can pull off, you can flash that wall that we've seen so many times in the Dragon Pit and just go for an early gank in the bottom side. Kind of surprised that they do let go of it, but with so many great picks right now, they don't want to first pick it. Also means that Gen.G might have to adjust a Wukong on B1 has been a staple for a lot of teams and Gen.G have always very happily opted into the Poppy as a counter pick into that. Um, Lucian has made it a bunch of, uh, through the draft a bunch of times uh, throughout the last couple of days. And now for Gen.G, I think you leave open both Zeri and Lucian and you just pick whichever is open. Um, although if DRX first pick the Lucian, you're not going to feel great. So kind of an awkward position for them here now, where uh, with what DRX have done, uh, it will be both Zeri and Lucian open. So DRX can pick up the Lucian here and then Gen G can lock in Zeri if they, they're brave enough, but we've seen that backfire really hard and Death and Barrow are in great shape, but no, 
<laughs> I'm yeah, I, you know I'm you know you I'm loving this. Chroniclers. <laughs> you know I'm loving this. Yeah. I I could you know, I, I, I know that you didn't actually forget, but uh the fact that it does come out here is very nice to see and I know it makes you happy. Seraphine makes her way onto the rift once again. And you can see Gen G, they're gonna go ahead and pick up their two carries. Azir and Lucian has immediately the response is Kogma. So Kogma Lulu looking pretty likely it has been an answer for this Lucian bottom lane. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. We have been calling for the Seraphine mid as well because it is a pick that is definitely flexible. Only rule that she's really not that strong is, is, is in support, both AP carry uh, in bot side and mid is, is very, very adept. Should have a good matchup. The one downside, of course, is that into the Azir, uh, you might run into a similar issue as the Victor where you can get just get scooped up repeatedly, but uh, Seraphine does have an incredible amount of wave clear very, very safely. and. I'm um, loving the opening draft here from DRX, really leaning into what makes them a very strong team, which is their diversity in draft, picking up one of the few lanes that we've seen actually be able to deal with the Lucian and the Nami, although you always are still going to have to be very careful, especially post six, because that lane does have a lot of explosiveness and great starts to the, uh, to the early drafting here. Yeah, definitely liking the drafting for DRX. Gen.G, on the other hand, is just very straightforward. Obviously, some huge power picks for themselves as well. Let's see what they are going to ban away here as well. The Gnar is going to be taken off the board. It looks like they want to pick up that jungle in the fourth slot and save the counter picks. They're not going to select Gnar fourth here, so they take that away. The Jarvan will also be taken off the board, so no Jarvan able to be played here for Peanut or Doran. And normally I'd love a Sejuani pick up here, especially because it's flexible. But with the Trundle still open, I don't think that the Genji is going to go in that direction. One threat that does exist for the DRX lineup that they need to be mindful of is that as strong as this comp, uh, this, this, uh, comp is, in terms of actual prio and, and uh, having first rotation and objectives, you're going to be in for a rough time already. Uh, yeah. Because uh, as much as I think the Lulu cog lane can do well and survive, if played well uh, for Ruler and Lance, they should be able to still maintain pre- Oh, I, okay. I can't, I love this. We're going to talk wait, a lot about- Wait, No, what? It, this is, it's, it's really, it's really, really good. Shivana is incredible. Uh, the one thing that's really uh, surprising to me about this is that generally with Shivana, you want compositions that have bot side prior because she snowballs very well off of early drakes. But Shivana is a stat check champion that's way too strong at the moment. And you Stop can go, life. okay. Okay, well, that's even crazier. Although we have seen yeah. it played in the LPL as well. So DRX, again, showing their inventiveness. I think I was thinking we were going to see it for Pioshi because it, it seems like such a Pioshi champion. But man, what a cool draft here from DRX. Yeah, I mean, I suppose there is still a small chance that the Lee Sin does go top. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not counting on it. Don't believe we're going to be seeing that here. Um, as what is going to be the answer now from Gen G? You, you see the Shivana, the Lee Sin face up, and they're going to go ahead and pick up the Hecarim. Uh, offers them a bit of a front line, a lot of engage that they were missing. Uh, along, uh, hard engage, I should say. Obviously, they do have some tools. But uh, yeah, allows you to get on in there and make sure your carries can do uh, the damage, given business in this one. As, yeah, DRX with a very strange but awesome draft to start. Uh, game number one. Really liking it. And the Hecarim to, to end on the Gen G draft um, works very well together with the Nami. It's a very strong offensive pick, but it has not been as strong as it has been in the past. Uh, so the pick is going to suffer a little bit more than the Hecarims that we might remember uh, from most notably Spring last time around was definitely nerfed repeatedly. But the DRX draft has a lot of very, very different angles that might be hard for Gen.G to deal with because the Shivana we haven't seen yet within the LCK, Seraphine actually being played mid, in addition to this Coglulu comp. Um, if this comp gets going, if you get through the early game, you can withstand the early pressure. Even with how good the scaling in theory is for Gen.G with that Azir, it's uh, going to be very, very rough for them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is definitely a draft where we kind of have to wait and see a bit. Uh, the early game could just be stomped by Gen G, and then all of a sudden, you know, with the lack of prior you were talking about, maybe the game just ends. But we'll have to wait and see, guys. Let's jump onto the rip for game number one.
here we go. Game number one will begin as... Uh, this is going to be a very interesting one, Chronicler. They're starting off game oh, yeah. number one on the blue side. DRX are not holding back. They say, let's bring out the picks, the new picks. The Seraphine hits the board once again. We see Kog'Maw Lulu again and again. It's it's Deft that's playing Kog'Maw. And they get Kingen on the Shivana, which... <laughs> this is very funny. Uh, just dancing with the Sand Soldier here is Zekka. Um... Kingen, I, I suppose he picked this specifically for the GP that they were expecting to come out here, Chronicle. Yeah, so uh, Shivana has been picked within the LPL. This will, uh, I assume, be the more standard build, which is the Frostfire and, and uh, possibly Blade of the Rune King build. We've seen both tank builds, but Shivana uses uh, Blade of the Rune King incredibly well because of the resets on her Q. So. Um, in case you've forgotten what Shivana does, because we've not seen her in a really long time, is an early invade being completely unspotted here, and that's going to give DRX a really, really nice early game match. So just the overall level of, as Deft takes a, a little bit of a longer path, uh, really nicely done, will be spotted on the way out though. So, uh, does mean that we might get some vertical jungling, but Shivana, uh, incredibly strong at level 6, really a kind of a stat check champion and is able to make great use of the Lethal Tempo specifically because of the poke that she has with E and um, the amount of pressure that she's generated once her ultimate is available. I'm actually surprised to King see King and go for the Ghost and not the Ignite because that is something you can do on Shivana because post 6 you have so much innate safety um, with your ultimate. Then. Uh, I, I really like the pick. Uh, it, it's really dumb because it's just a big dragon and it has insane sticking power <laughs> and it just um, it yeah. just it just wins a lot of trades because of how incredibly oppressive the amount of damage that she does is, even if you don't spec into AP with your E. Uh, so really exciting, very very fun. We've seen this pick. Uh, I forgot which team specifically picked it up, but uh, it was. Uh, picked up and uh, multiple times within the LPL by one of their top laners and uh, was very very successful Yeah, and speaking of successful lanes uh, the Lucian Nami obviously can have a lot of power But we've been seeing more and more the Kog'Maw Lulu just Essentially come out here against the Lucian Nami specifically and say oh well even right from level one We just get to outrange you we can out poke you and there's not really too much you can do about it unless you're going to hard engage uh, Kog'Maw can do this in general, but especially Kog'Maw Lulu has been a strong lane for a very long time. You guys saw the uh, the win rate that Deft has on it. I think it's about 75%. Um, yeah. And he has over 20 games on it because it's, it's just been around for so long. And he's been one of the guys that's piloted it the best over the years. So um, this is just really awesome. It feels like Genji got a little bit baited into this bottom lane. Obviously, it, it is very strong still. Don't get me wrong, the Lucianami, but uh, you can already see what uh, Kog'Maw and Lulu can do to counter it. Yeah, the uh, important thing to note is that normally Lucianami is very strong starting like level 2 when you're actually able to uh, hit a bubble and, and Lucian can dash in and you can basically win almost any trade. It really changes when you're looking at a Kog Lulu lane where it's post 6 where you still have a lot of threat. The positioning of depth is going to be need to be very, very very delicate because if you overstep um, as wow coup smamp <laughs> against sh not the shy <laughs> cj enters shy like that's yeah yeah so some of um, you uh league zoomers out there might not know about shy but uh he's he's in our uh <laughs> well, what is the name of that segment the the dr tongues Doc or tongues, whatever yeah like, dr tongues uh, yeah, he's one of the guys there. As uh, Here's a big trade being taken by King, and here's where the Ignite could come into effect, but he's trying to get the Flash out anyway, as the Q not quite off a of cooldown, but you can see what the Shivana, even at level 4, is able to do to the GP. And the cool thing is for Kingen, uh, with him putting a lot of points in his E, obviously in situations like this it already feels pretty good, but it is exceptionally strong post-6. Um, if you have ever played against AP Shivana, I'm sure you know how incredibly frustrating that is. Doesn't have Ghost, though. 
No ghost. He has a Z, but no chance for him to get out of this one, even with a ward. He was trying to be safe, but the second he steps up to the lane, he is just 100% dead. Very nicely set up there by Peanut to secure the kill. Yeah, really well read by Peanut, and also you see the actual downside for King in there, because him going for the plate with the Ghost and not getting the kill means that he can't actually get in the shove. So he can either accept the freeze, Pioshik is pathing away from his lane, so he's kind of screwed if he does that, because he doesn't actually get to walk up until he sees Peanut, which might be for not for a really long time. And then in addition to that, um, Peanut really, really carefully playing around the vision, so Kingen feels relatively safe after he places his ward, and then Peanut goes in immediately, knowing that without Ghost and Pre-6, the Shivana is completely unable um, to really stay alive. Early Drake would be really big here for DRX, and that's where the early laning power of this uh, Kogalulu really comes into play, because Shivana gets resistances from Drakes, um, and then whenever she goes into dragon form, they also double. So uh, it, it is yeah. <laughs> it is incredibly strong, uh, and and can really similar to what Belveth does with uh, with Harold's right. It can just really help snowball and accelerate the lane. Yeah, and uh, you can see this bottom side Peanut once again trying to come in here, but uh, they're under the turret, so <laughs> not really going to amount to too much. Here is a very big dragon once again, as King just going to pop that right away. Deft and Barrel trying to hold the lane here and trying to bait for the gank. Barrel will survive just barely as the Q is going to land here onto Lahans, but Peanut is nearby. As Pioshik reads the situation, he will be able to hop away and not overcommit. A very close play there. Barrel really playing with fire, but he does get away with it as here's the engage onto Zeka, who is not going to flash. He's just going to say, you know what? You don't have the damage. I'm just going to walk around this wall and uh, just totally ignore you. And this is the downside of Peanut showing on bot side. If Zekka doesn't know where Peanut is, he has to basically flash that. As Yeah, I just want to again highlight Peanut playing this really well. Because he knows that the ward has been placed. You can see the wave state. So he can just goes up as close as he can. And it's a freebie. Yeah, really? uh, he's called the, the entire play the whole time. He's like, yeah, uh, he's going to place a ward here. And OK, let's go. I'm, I'm going to go for this after he drops the ward and returns to lane. Like, it's all entirely set up. And Peanut knew exactly what was happening. So speaking of early drakes, it does look like Peanut is going to be able to take the first one on the map. So that will be denied from DRX. And of course, the resistances that Shiv gets, uh, gets from Drakes is not uh, it's not gaming in by itself. So it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely a nice little boost if you are able to get it. Uh, with Trovi backing now and not having teleport, it looks like the counterplay will be DRX able to pick up this Rift Herald on top side, even though it is on vision. Not going to be a problem for them whatsoever. And you'll see the rotation come through from Barrel, which should mean that Ruder and Lahens are going to try and shove in. I wouldn't even mind if they use a, an aggressive calling. Although Deft is also taking red buff here, which that's really early. And it makes sense considering your cockmaw, but picking up a second buff is actually something that can be annoying. But he's kind of forced to because look at this freeze. He can't walk up, can't do anything. Mm. It is slowly pushing back, but uh... Yeah, he is being denied a decent amount of CS, and things are pretty good for him so far in terms of CS. Barrel is going to hear that Lahens is in that brush, and now they will regain control of this lane. Deft with the red buff, he just gets a little whimsy, and he's like, yeah, hello, uh, I'm here, and I'm ready to oh. party. Very annoying yeah, for Ruler is... and Lahens to deal with this. It really is, and the issue for Ruler and Lands is because she gets so aggressively outranged and outpoked, you're basically forced to all-in here. But if you fail the all-in, then Deft picks up a double and then the game is truly over, so I'm happy to see Peanut path towards the bot side, and would be shocked if he doesn't try to use his Onslaught of Shadows here, but DRX seem to be aware of that as well, as Pioshik is making his way over and Zekka has just shoved in mid. Yeah. There's just been so much pressure on the bottom lanes uh, in the past week, I would say, especially. Like, teams are like, no, 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 we gotta gank the bottom lane. We have to get on in there. Early ganks, later ganks, doesn't matter. So much action in the bottom lane nowadays. And uh, it's leading to a lot of the junglers having to respond 
to that pressure and just having to kind of hover down there. As Zeft is nearing about 20 CS up, Doshig is going to find Peanut in the jungle as we speak. And so now you can see that Ruler and Lehen's not in a great spot. Yeah, should not be able to dive, but at the very least, I'm um, going to get a charge here. You know, just there to make sure that they can try and uh, mitigate the damage that's going to come through. Lehan's still level 5, though, so no wave. And without the wave, there is very little he can do here. It's going to have to clear the wave. Can't really do anything else. The tidal wave, not the minion wave. Very important <laughs> clarification. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, they will be able to stifle the push for now, but it is two plates uh, into the bottom lane. They did trade it, of course, with Pyoshik, or I suppose share with Pyoshik is the better word. And Kingen's like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still Siobhan. I can come down here, take the Scuttle Crab really easily. Uh, you, you see that with that early gank, he has fallen a little bit behind on CS, so the Shivana in the lane at least. Uh, not finding as much success as they would have liked, as Beryl is going to nearly take out the play by himself, but going to leave that potentially for Deft to take on the next go about. Ooh, King and has Ghost and his ultimate available. Two men goon squad making their way over. And you see a ruler about to arrive as well. King is waiting for that one. Is he going to hit his ultimate? He finally picks it up, but uh, too much damage is coming out here, and Peanut doesn't even have to use his Onslaught of Shadows. That's going to be a second death, unfortunately, for King as the Shivana is being punished hardcore. Really nice room there. Really nice swap rather uh, initiated by Genji, uh, meaning that they get their bot lane out of this. A pretty, pretty terrible uh, Kogalulu lane, uh, especially now that the Blade of the Rune King has been finished. Means that Doran is going to have a little bit of a rough time. Might also get Dove Peanut looking for the counterplay, but if this play doesn't work out for DRX, Ruler and Lahens are just free hitting on the turret here. Chovia yeah, TP. is going to get there in about seven years as Peanut is here, and you can see that the wave is being cleared. They're able to pick up that third plate here for death, but no turret is given on over. Zekka with the crown. He's just trying to survive. He's just trying to farm here against Tovi. Take a look at this. I mean, King can't even enter the lane. He's just jungling on the top side of the map right now. As he will eventually get up there. Crown's really interesting because of how well uh, the Seraphine is able to use the Leandries. Uh, with how her kit kind of incentivizes you to just continues to look for poke and have a lot of AoE as a wool ruler sitting on a ward. Gonna get cancelled here, but we'll be fine outside of that. Um, but looking into the Genji comp, it is relatively hard besides Chovy for them to consistently break it, and most notably, uh, if you die, generally it's gonna be a big shuffle or a 100 to 0 from Genji, so. In that way, uh, Crown will uh, provide a lot of value here for Zekka, as long as he can keep it up in any fight. As Doran is, he's taking oh, one for the team, man. Valdez. He's not having a good time. Yeah, I mean, this is what happens when you have to lane swap into the Cog Lulu, and you're <laughs> a melee champion. Like, at least he's got barrels, otherwise he wouldn't be doing anything. As here's Peanut and the Cannon Barrage, as... Uh, looks like Beryl is in for a world of hurt, but he does have the wild growth, and Lahens and Doran are not able to catch up and actually do any follow-up damage. Meanwhile, nobody's in the top lane. Ruler's going bot, and so Kingen is able to get a nice big chunk onto the top turret as well. Really nicely done, and DRX able to find a favorable trade there. Unfortunately for Peanut, not able to get his E off because of the Polymorph. Nicely timed by Beryl there making sure that uh, there was no way for Peanut to actually knock him into the rest of the team, which would have been a really big issue and uh, would have spelled his doom. And I'm liking Genji's attention. They're continuously still trying to get the ruler ahead, which is going to give him a lot more agency as we go into the later stages of the game. It's very important to notice that ever since the crit changes came through to Lucian, um, his late game isn't necessarily amazing, although obviously he has a lot of alim potential, but due to his ultimate now scaling with crit, um, he does have a lot more power even in the later stages of the game as kind of a AD caster. Uh, so as long as you can maintain relative parity and keep getting resources, or in this game a lot of kills, 
uh, you are still going to be a big late game threat, especially with the amount of setup that Genji have. Otherwise, the Nami, uh, Chovy with uh, shuffles, and Doran with his barrels. Yeah. Chovy himself going Ludens. Just going to be looking oh to chop people down as Depth is just getting free XP and a turret in the bottom lane in exchange for the second Rift Heralds. I mean, Genji aren't really big on the Rift Heralds uh, in this current patch. They don't really have a high Rift Herald take percentage, but the choice there to go for that one and just give up the bottom lane here to <laughs> Depth, who is now stealing the enemy jungle is uh, a bit interesting because Deft is really beginning to get out of hand. You were talking about, you know, the potential of pollution as the game comes along, but uh, he's up against that Kog'Maw, and uh, I, I will struggle to see how he will um, yeah. really compare and be able yeah. to fight against that range, especially. Yeah, it's especially into just Kog'Maw by itself would be one thing, but it's a Kog'Maw that is being protected by Lulu, so Chovy's place becomes a lot harder because if he goes in and he gets polymorphed and he doesn't get an actual shuffle off, then he's in for a really bad time. Um, and a Seraphine as well. And the Seraphine really is the kicker because as strong as Lulu is, she's generally not necessarily able to provide health if you do get hit by barrels, if Chovy tries to poke you, or if Ruler finds like half of a calling. But due to the Seraphine and her uh, W not even needing to be empowered with all the Lulu shields, Comes so hard, and DRX's frontline is going to be unkillable as uh, the Shivana and, and Pioshi both, like augmented by both Lulu and Seraphine, is it's it's going to be really rough for Gen G. They still have a really strong comp if they can find some of these big wombo combos, but the execution is be so crisp. Wow, Zeka is forcing this fight. We got teleport and Pioshi coming down to the bottom side. Kingen is here. Toby with his flash available, just going to push. The dragon away as now he's going to put up that sun turret and he realizes Pyoshik's here as well. This is going to be the alley oop for Pyoshik as he does take that down. Death tier trying to hold on to this turret and actually baits Beanut into this one, has to flash to get away and the turret will go down. So I suppose a win at the end of the day for Gen G. But now the counter push coming in here that uh, Peanut is out of the fight. They can begin to come in here. The tidal wave is going to help push them away for a little bit. But uh, you can see the Q going to land. He's going in. Pyoshik looking for the kill. On to Ruler. Not quite going to pick it up as the Cannon Barrage will be forced to come out here. And DRX will be able to get away. Really nicely done there by Ruler. Able to use his guild force and his relentless pursuit to stay alive. And overall, uh, especially with them being able to now get in a uh, back and beat to the Drake early, I think that slightly favors Gen G uh, as Chovy is... We talked about full damage. He is going death cap second. Uh, so he's definitely not here to poke. He is here to murder some people, which I really appreciate. I, I, that's the way you need to play into these enchanter comps. You need to try and win the fight within the first few seconds because, as you can see there as well, like Peanut tries to engage on death. And yes, death has to flash, but if there's more people there and there's an actual re engage from DRX and death can just keep ordering like that, Peanut's half health is going to be a disaster. Um, but Genji, of that play at least, will get the upper hand and pick themselves up the Drake. Yeah, it's a nice little win for them. And I think the game should slow down a little bit from here. Uh, some of the outer turrets will be taken down. This outer in the top side for DRX should eventually go down. And uh, might just look to farm it out. There's no objectives at this point in time. Um, in terms of damage on the side of DRX, they can, of course, just with Cogma, be able to take big objectives, even uh, the Baron, but obviously at this point not really going to be looking to uh, rush that down unless they can get Supreme Vision Control. And so Deft is going to pick up another red buff. The red buff is now his for the rest of the game, as yeah, it has been yeah, since it's... about minute 12. <laughs> Yeah, this is and this is not uh, about Pioshi. The way it's gonna go. And yeah. Pioshi knows, right? He accepts this. Uh, <laughs> one of should've, the issues we're given that kill over. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very, very selfish of him to take it. Yeah. Uh, not actually okay. Uh, uh, jokes aside, what's really hard for Genji here as well is that in a normal situation, if this was a uh, a Jinx or an Aphelios, the 
amount of value you would get from armor itemization would be pretty high because this is a comp that can lack damage. Um, but DRX's comp, even though they don't have a real AP carry because Seraphine, while really strong and like doing a lot of damage continuously, isn't really going to be a heavy lifter. They have a Shivana, they have a a, a Mall, right, with with uh, with his W, so there is actually so much AP damage that still does come through, which means itemization for Genji is kind of a nightmare, and yeah, um, Ruler is forced to go Rapid Fire Cannon second, but that says a lot about the state of the game. Yeah. I mean... But not in a good I, way. I, um, I don't even know really what that does is I'm gonna have to hold my thought on that as Kingen might be looking for a potential fight. No, just gonna back away. Uh, rapid fire cannon, like yes, you can you can get that initial two tap off and you can potentially uh, fight in terms of the first couple of hits, but uh, other than that, you're not in a good spot. As Chovy is going to just be rooted up, he was on vision the entire way, as now he's going to get Death behind the wall here. Death with no flash barrel, flashing over, trying to save him there, as here comes the Shivana, and they say, no, 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 we got Chovy. We don't need anything else. Just pick up the Azir. Let's back away. Yeah, Chovy was uh, sitting on the ward uh, right there, and it does have an extra far side orb, so that part, very nice. Downside is that if you go for a play like that and, and you're looking for a scoop, you're looking for a cheeky kill on someone, you need to make 100% sure that you are not in vision. Uh, otherwise, it backfires immensely, as we see there. And Gen G, it, the, the weird thing is they're too take gold up. But every single fight for them, it feels like it's losing. Uh, and it's a really interesting if this is just... Yeah, uh, straight up 100 to 0, so much safety available here, and Ruler trying to salvage the situation, but not going to be able to. And rest of Drex just uh, calmly walks off, having so much innate safety, and uh, Genji, in terms of a cross map, I think, and in terms of CSing, is still doing better. But you gotta win fights. Can't win the game if you're not able to actually take down Death. Yeah, definitely a uh, important thing to do in this game. It is essentially a Technicognor composition. As uh, you see, Peanut, oh. you're not really going to be able to just walk and gallop in front of them. It's either you're engaging or you're not. <laughs> you, you can't just sit there and, and take like three, four autos from Deft because you're just going to lose half your health. It doesn't matter how much health you have because, of course, it's Cogmaw. He's going to chip away at that health. So, um, again, as you kind of pointed out, as we can see here, they have to hard engage or they're not going to be at a good spot. Yeah, the hard age isn't actually that good. Uh, it's yeah. something that's really important. Is oh. Okay, there's the cannon barrage. Well, and uh, Death will be at full health shortly. Don't you worry, yeah. guys. And uh, yeah, that's why I was saying the draft, you know, the Hecarim kind of helps them out in that sense, but it is only the Hecarim. So, <laughs> all right, yeah. Peanut, it's time to get on the horse, uh, figuratively here, and uh, actually get some engages, otherwise this turret is going to go down. I also want to know that Doran's build, which I've been a big fan of in the past, in this situation, I think is really going to hurt them. This ruler is going to be fine. It's a very slow ultimate. Don't know what that was about. Um, because the build that Doran has gone for here is very strong if there is no sustain. But Chovy, I think, has the right idea where you just go for a build that one-taps. And I think the crit build for Gangplank offers much more I one tap Lulu when she dies, as all oh, peanuts run in. I'm trying to get in here. It doesn't look like there is a Smite, obviously, because this is Shivana top. And so they will be able to pick it up, DRX here. Peanut will cheekily just gallop by and pick up this Rift Scuttle. And that is about it. Meanwhile, Chovy is going to take down this top tier two. You can see that he does so much damage with all the AP that he has. And so actually a really effective split pusher at the same time. And I want to highlight what Genji is doing here, which is, I think, the correct approach, which is abandon team fight, just side lane. Never, ever try to actually deal with DRX when they're grouped. And you have that luxury to a certain extent because they're not anywhere near Soul and Ocean Soul. It's going to make the DRX comp even more disgusting in terms of sustain, but if you're waiting a fight as Genji, like, sustain doesn't matter, right? Like, either you're getting the big backline play or you're not. 
um, and, and, and Ma our uh, Ocean Soul is, is not going to be the end of your uh, uh, at the end of the world if 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 the Rx get it. Um, because I don't think you win a 5v5. I just don't think it happens. So Genji instead is going to have to try because they do win side lanes. Uh, especially once Doran is able to hit his third item, I think he should have a lot of pressure on Kingen. But Kingen can use the uh, burnout and his ultimate to try and either stick to Doran if he wants to or dodge some of the barrels. But Chovy in particular is unmatched. So. Oh he's going Shadow Flame as well. He's not messing about. <laughs> yeah, just. Yeah. Uh, just 1v1, right? And that's easier said than done. But the engage from the Rx is actually pretty lackluster. So if you don't fight them, they don't really do a whole lot besides the threat on Baron is... Uh, okay, they're going to kill the Hems. They really wanted to kill the Hems. And in fact, they will. It's a big mistake as now, with no Nami, no Tidal Wave at all, Ruler just has to uh, hop away, Gale Force and... Relentless uh, escape once again, as now they can force Genji to come. Yeah. This is one way to do it. If you don't have engage, just start health. a big objective and force them to uh, to fight you. His ruler over the wall here. He is doing a nice amount of chip damage already. Death essentially doing the majority of the damage here on this one. The barrel not going to land onto anyone. The cannon barrage is coming out as Death. Kind of in the middle here, they're looking for the fight as Toby just going to be first 100 to zero in the Polymorph. Unbelievable the damage that DRX have right now as the rest of Genji have to just flash away. Lehens is alive again. There's very short uh, kill timers at this point in time, but you can see DRX are just going to start this again. Doran TP. Does he have the time? I mean, he's he's running out of it. I mean, I'm not sure really what this is going to do for him as again the barrel is denied. No damage comes in as in goes the Hecarim and the Polymorph the just gets bars. so much value. It is insane. As Ruler, he's going to be slowed up and he nearly dies. The Baron goes down and Ruler should be going down here eventually as down he will go. The artillery comes in as the hens will follow the same fate. That is going to be DRX just still behind on gold. It doesn't matter. They're going to take the Baron down. Ah, uh, that's, that's Drop Kingdom coming through right there as Zekka is playing one of the most pre uh, proactive Seraphine games that I've seen. Really nice buffer there uh, on the ultimate as he flashes over the wall, secures them the kill, and look at the value that Lulu Seraphine provides here. They can keep leashing and keep forcing Genji to run into them, trade Poe, because it doesn't matter. Note that Zekka is getting shielded by Barrow as well to make sure that he gets the full heal on his W, just so that he has a shield. Like, it's being played out very, very well, and they just they don't have the damage. Like, no one's dying. Zekka's just sitting on an empowered W, throws it down, and that is the end of it, and we're seeing the issue. Genji, gold lead or not, they just don't have the damage available. So you're saying enchanters are strong. Is, is that what you're saying, Chronicler? Because they look pretty strong to me. Um, what? Well, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's not, Everybody it's not new is full information. Health at the end of this fight, everybody is full health. Um, you have engage opportunities. You can protect the Kog'Maw. Oh, uh, that's just going to be DP dead. Uh, nicely done there by DRX. However, they got it done. Looks like maybe Koshi got a kick. Not really sure. He doesn't have flash. It's now deft. Uh, <laughs> Polymorph is just going to say, we like, no, you don't this. get to do anything. You just don't get to do anything as Koshik decides, yeah, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm zoning, okay. guys. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I don't think it matters, though, because Steph is still alive, and he still has the supports. He's flashing under the turret. He doesn't care about your turret. He doesn't care about what damage you have. He has Seraphine, and he has Lulu who both have no kills. They have eight and seven assists apiece. And he went Aww. chem tank as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get him, Deft. Get him. Oh, Jeez. man. <laughs> chem tank empowered gaming of Japanese. Ah, Penis dead. Yeah. Penis well, very, very yeah. dead. Encore comes um, in. He's, yeah, he's dead. No, he's dead. Yeah. There is, uh, there's no way. Uh, yeah, that, that, I, I hope we don't get a re- Oh, no. Dude. Dolan, no. <laughs> He's so no, fast! Dolan. He's so fast, he can't get away from him! Not even the gangplank can get away from this pick! It is so disgusting! This is insane! 
the draft kingdom that we are seeing. Gen Z cannot oh. play the game. I'm they can't play this. the game. They can't. <laughs> and this is DRX with such a dominant game. And obviously, big part of this is the Seraphina pick that we know is broken on this patch. But it's not we just know. that. It's the Cop Lulu, right? It's the whole combination. It's DRX being like, no, 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 we, yeah. can, we can play this. We can do this. That's no problem. And DRX leaning this much into being the inventive team of the LCK is so, it's so important. Because this is exactly the type of shenanigans that kill the LCK, right? Like, it, we, how many times have we seen drafts like this and then, then the, the LCK is not able to deal? We need these type of, type of moments, so loving what DRX is doing here. Uh, I, I, I don't see a way for Genji back into this game because of how impressive this comp is. And <laughs> the only question oh, so this becomes... Is <laughs> yeah, is it is it a Zeka vote or a Death vote? Because I think that's a, that's a very interesting uh, discussion to have. Um, I, I, I'd lean towards Zeka. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. I'm smelling a little bit of Seraphine bias over there, even though we're not... Uh in the same room casting right now. <laughs> well, I think... No, I, I, I mean, they, they, they both have really good games. Uh, and also, Deft is, is playing very well, but he also has Seraphine and Lulu. And I feel like that plays True. hard. So it's that's why it's uh, hard, right? Yeah, it certainly but does. My, my <laughs> Deft vote is... Oh, uh, king and... Okay, we're, we're just flashing in to the <laughs> top turret as... Uh, now Deft is here. He's just waiting. They're, they're just being corralled like sheep under the turret right now and they say well we don't have to do this let's let's calm down a little bit guys as Deft has different ideas uh, he doesn't want to get bubbled because even with all the supports and everything even with the chem tank I'd imagine that he can get burst down still there is some uh, good amount of damage here on the side of Genji um, obviously not able to deal with the amount of support that Deft is having but if he's alone could be nice as yeah they're just sieging here they don't have baron they don't need baron because they have a uh, supreme range with this kogma and here we go uh, peanut is going to just press his buttons and there you have it the stopwatch is available but it is there for the side of toby and immediately down goes the kogma this is what we've been looking for as finally they do take him down but at the end of the day it is just going to be the kogma that gets taken out and genji cannot follow up because their base is in tatters Oh, and that's such a good setup there from Gen G. They're able to find the miracle fight that we've been looking for, but uh, you kill Cog, but Cog is not the only problem in this comp. Unfortunately for you, as we discussed previously, damage from Zeka, from King, and still going to be very relevant. They still pick themselves up the objective, still have a good setup coming through for the Baron here, and uh, overall, um, the fact that Gen G remains relevant in terms of items means that they're, they're not truly out of the game. But they're gonna need another one of these, right? Because this was what really big. Uh, what was really big is that Barrel polymorphed Peanut, and Barrel also was feared by Peanut, right? So both Deft and Barrel were taken. Zeka didn't have ulti because he used it previously, um, and and even with all those stars aligning, Choke cool. immediately died for it, right? And and you get the kill. Yeah, but that's also all you're gonna get. Hey, you can see that. Uh... He originally calls for the Kog'Maw, but then he's like, oh, well, <laughs> I, I'm on the other side of the fight here. Can't really get out of this one. And he does go down, as you mentioned. So, Kingen, he's got the dragons available as the damage healed is now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Damage healed and shielded <laughs> is over 10,000. Yeah. Actually, I think it's I think it's over 15,000. I think it's actually both numbers. One is healed and one is shield. Uh, not 100% sure as it's, it's just a ridiculous number. That's what you have to know. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. He, he's got four items now as well. As here comes Kingen. Nice little engage. He says, someone has to fight me. I really do want to fight, but they don't actually have to, unless Goshi can get this kick, kind of kicks him away from death, so not really what he was looking for there. Ooh, As you see, DRX are making their way now towards this ocean soul, and they should be able to pick it up. They will. Uh, do know that at, at, as much as we talk about the DRX comp and how good it is, they haven't won the game yet. Peanut with a flank angle. 
Oh boy, I they don't know. have no idea. Here comes Ruler, he's looking for Sekka as that's going to be the cleanse though. Ruler is totally fine, but he's not doing damage out of the back line. But it does not matter because the rest of Genji is there. And they are able to burst down the Kog'Maw and the Lee Sin. And Genji, they set up the fight. Here comes the rest of DRX though. They say, you can't do Baron right now. We're going to take down your inhibitors at least. As the damage is really insane onto this objective, they will take down the Baron at least. As you see, Zekka not quite able to take the inhibitor. Near, neither is King in, and actually both inhibitors will be saved. And that is so nicely done. DRX crucially a little bit too spread out there, uh, because we have King and doing Baron here, right? And he teleports in, is able to join the fight, but Gen G still have a window of time. And it is Peanut's flank being able to get the fear, and Zekka not actually being with the carries crucially here uh, that allows Genji to win this fight. If Zekka is with Deft, he doesn't die. But because Ruler was actually keeping him busy, really nice usage of a small window there. And now Genji have the Baron and have the shove again. Yeah, I mean, it, it's huge. It's a couple of fights in a row where they have found a hole in the armor and they have just gone for it immediately. Just really nice setups a couple of times. And this is the power of Gen G. You know, we, we said and we saw just how oppressive uh, the composition from DRX can be. But sometimes, sometimes it's just a hand stiff. Sometimes it's just a understanding of the game that can make the difference here. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, the game isn't over. DRX could also still win from here, as they are doing a decent job of clearing up the waves with their Kog'Maw, essentially. Uh, only the Kog'Maw and the Seraphine, I should say, as Zekka's doing a nice job. Pyoshik has been doing a good job as well, just being really annoying. He's like, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to go in, because I know my team will follow up if they need to. And he's just chipping away, just trying to make Peanut a little bit less likely to engage. And Genji now trying to set up a similar play, going in on Ooh, King and King in. very, Gotta very be tanky. Careful. Yeah. And by the way, he does have Warmog, so he can yeah. take poke like that and be totally fine. So he's just going to heal up to full here in just a moment. And they do have Ocean Soul as well, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, you you have two enchanters, a Warmog, and no mana. So uh, King is fine. King, King is <laughs> never has to leave the. King and never has to go home. He's on that. He's on. A, he, he's having a great time here from yeah. Genji. The wife's on a business trip. He's like, yeah, I get all the yeah. house to myself. I can do whatever I want. Playing video games all night. Can play League of Legends for eight hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. And, uh, that's a little okay, bit much. There is. Yeah, don't. That's that seems like a little bit uh, excessive. Never done that sure. in my life. I wouldn't. Yeah. Under any uh, circumstances. Sure, me too, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely yeah. not us. And yeah, I mean, you can see in this game, by the way, that like Gen G, they're about to run out of their Baron buff. They got, I think, two inner turrets, uh, but no inhibitor turrets. So importantly, there's not really that much pressure on the map onto DRX, which means that it gives DRX a chance to group up as five and, and try to take the fight on their terms. They don't have to worry about, you know, a backdoor attempt or, you know, super minions pushing into the bottom lane or anything like that. We still have a game here. It's 40 minutes in. And Gen G, they have insane damage themselves now, an insane burst. Uh, so they just kind of have to control the map and try to fight on their terms. Really do. And the grip of Gen G, as they are able to move very far forward, ties into one of the issues that the RX have. Once they're fighting, this comp is amazing, but actually starting fights is a nightmare. You have Shirelias on Lulu. That, that's, that's basically it. Barring, as we saw, Zekka hitting a big ultimate, Pioshik finding a kick, but all of that kind of implies that all the hands. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Well, hands again, not in a great spot, and this is what can happen as Nami. It doesn't matter if the tidal wave comes in, he is going to get extremely low, and it's, it's Lee Sin as Shivana. I mean, he's he's jumped so many walls. Like, how how far does he have to get away from this to actually survive? As you see, Toshi, he's going in for this one. He is going to kill the Nami and trade his life for it, potentially here. He's buying some time. Okay, he's definitely dead. Meanwhile, Chovy was pushing the top lane, nearly took out a turret what? by himself. 
and these Pioshik moments are, are are very, very impactful. That's not the first time. We had his play around the mid lane inhibitor as well. And if he keeps going down like this, uh, this is going to provide a really good setup. Now, Gen G, 50 seconds on the clock, can set up deep vision around the Elder. And without vision, DRX is going to have to effectively take a big risk, not be able to check where Peanut is, and run into the exact same issues that they faced before. So, Pioshek dying there for Nami, like, in terms of gold, is obviously kind of whatever, and there's no immediate repercussions. But for Gen G, the Elder now becomes a much much more attainable goal and i don't care how much healing you have once that elder comes through genji is still going to run through you uh barrel i mean somebody has to get vision but unfortunately for drx like it can't be the lulu alone right they gotta go in together if they want to try to retake vision here as they will eventually slowly but surely push in through the mid lane as everybody's kind of over the wall here, Chovy and Peanut being chipped away at, but they're taking down this Elder pretty quickly. Not going to commit to it yet, though. As now... Wait, out the Shivana ultimate. King in, uh, in non-Dragon form, not going to be nearly as big of a threat. Yeah, not really doing too much damage either is death. He has to front line. They've been so good about taking down those barrels, by the way, but this is the damage! This is the damage coming out from Gen.G as now a big engage comes in. They find the front line and Zekka is going to be taken down. Gen.G take the fight on their terms. They get the burst damage in first. Peanut's there to follow up. And again, another fight where Death just doesn't really get to do damage. They don't get to fight 5v5 and Gen.G are just outplaying them now. Oh, Chen Ji are looking so good here, and Ruler's angles on this Lucian. It's exactly what we talked about earlier, right? Where you're able... Uh, I don't think they can actually get through it because they don't have Baron, so they definitely need to go for Baron and then fight. Um, really nice catch there by King and making sure that they don't have a wave. What, what I want to highlight here is exactly what we talked about way back. I, I don't know, what is it, 30 minutes? About Lucian scaling ever since they changed the uh, way his calling works. Because that moment right there is is possible because of a ruler's angle right and, and the rest of gen g does a really good job enabling him but him hitting that much damage over the wall by not being at threat not even the drx comp can heal through and you can also lose the game here right like uh, that's 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 it's the amount of damage that he does and then peanut does a very di nice job of secondary initiating and as you pointed out yeah, death doesn't get to auto oh, okay, okay. in that fight at all do, do dragon, do dragon. Um, yeah, I mean, the, all of that damage in that fight was basically just ruler. He must have done at least 6,000, I would have thought, oh, maybe 5 to 6,000. Yeah, yeah uh, just in that tiny little short span of, of time. So now with the Baron and the Elder Drink, one minute. Can DRX stop them? is the question. Ruler has to be careful. You know, he's, he's not going to find the exact angle that he just got in that last fight. That one was kind of gifted to him, and he found it, took it into his own hands. That's going to be the second inhibitor going down. You see that we do have, once again, Ruler looking for those engages, but not going to amount to much. Just waiting for Peanut to push in the bottom lane, essentially, and push with two lanes here. As the calling comes out, Death nearly dies, and Barrel is going to go down in the end, but a huge Encore. Can they do anything with it is the question. The answer is absolutely not. They just don't really have a front line. They don't have a way now for Death to do real damage, and the Nexus is just dead. They're just killing the turrets. They're just killing the objectives, and they will take the game somehow. Gen G will outplay it and take a 45-minute game in one that did not look winnable halfway through. Through the power of sheer will, they are able to outplay it and take the game down. Paul, oh, and we talk about why drafts are important. What we also see there is that as good, as important as they are and as much as we like to talk about them, in the end, sometimes in League of Legends, you can just hand stiff it. And Ruler has been the king of hand stiff this entire split. Getting pummeled so hard in this, Lu or in this Lucian Nami lane by the Coglulu, getting focused extremely heavily as well, right? Pioshik paying so much attention. 
uh, Chovy having a, a kind of a rough game, even though I really liked his build. Doran, kind of the flip side, had an okay game and, and the build was not great. But Ruler, uh, augmented by Peanuts re-engages, more than enough. I loved what DRX did, but this is really, this is just a testament to how good Genji really is. Uh, incredible, yeah. incredible show of force and really adept at reading the game state and identifying that one win condition, which is we win a fight in the first three seconds of it, or it's not happening. So I feel like this might be the first time I've really seen a graph where two players have over a thousand DPM. It's probably incorrect. I mean, we've had so many games, but just insanity that both Death and Ruler were like, nope. <laughs> I'm the carry now. First it was Death with all of his support, and then it was Ruler, basically alone, uh, and then had the rest of the team to obviously help out and follow up. And yeah, it's insane that they were able to take this one down. Eventually they Wild. had the damage to just push through and force their way and take this game down. So that was game number one going to Gen G. We're gonna take a short break and have the analyst carpet space. We will be right back. ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、
나카나면 세라핀 아냐? 야, 안할 거잖아. 아, 나 설렜네. 할 수도 있어. 할 수도 있어. 서포 만만한 거 뜨면은 세라핀 가자. 네, 깡캔 수도 있어요. 처음엔. 내도 되네. 야, 세라핀 맞아. 가는 거야, 가는 거야. 우리 콩이 없어. 캔지 높여. 캔지 보자, 캔지 보자. 쿵쿵쿵쿵. 뒤에 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 뒤에. 나가, 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 나가. 당기, 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 당기. 야, 그래, 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 그래. 형 세라핀이야. 야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야야
He also can just frontline extremely well here against Ruler on Illusion. So Wayne's well against the Gangplank, and I really love that we're seeing more adaptations from other regions coming here into the LCK as that o uh, OMG build shows through here for Kinga once again. Yeah, exactly, and more options to be picked up as well from a whole lot of players. But we got to move quickly. Let's jump into our first highlight here. Um, this is where DRX demonstrated just how good this composition is and how proactively you can yeah, play. Exactly. This is a sick engage from Zekka, flashing the buffer to old four. He buffers it forward with flash, and then Toshi gets instantly there for the fall. Lehenge is out of the fight, and that's basically it. Baron is unwinnable now for Gen G, as they don't have long term damage with the Ludens build here and the Lucian. This stage of the game, we're 26 minutes in, and DRX composition is so accelerated because Depth got so ahead early on with this Kogma Lulu. And you can see Chovy is trying to flank here, he's trying to set up the sandwich, but there just isn't enough damage. Even with Peanut in position here to set up for an ultimate, just too too slow is how this is played out. And look at this, the kick during the ultimate, then he's instantly polymorphed and blown up, and that's all the damage gone. By the time Peanut ults, it's already over. And I mean, frankly, even without the polymorph there, and without that sick play from Yoshi, I don't think they win this fight. They just don't have enough damage against all those shields. Yeah, exactly right. And also, Chovy is the only one that has any agency in killing Deft throughout this entire game, right? Yes, Deft can get sped up and things like this. It's difficult to get to the Cogmore, but until he built Gale Force extraordinarily late into the game, it's only Flash that he has to reposition at a moment's notice, right? So these Emperor's Divides had to be on point. DRX knew this, they played around it in that moment extraordinarily beautifully. But things went wrong as yeah. the game went on, Wolf. So, yeah. uh, Deft died up towards the top side, but that's not the replay we have. It's this one here where DRX, if they're not as a unit, the comp does not work. Exactly. This is such a sick play here from Brewer because while he pushes Zekka away and forces the ultimate out, look at the, what's happening on the other side of the fight. Peanut comes in here and sets up the fear, and they instantly are able to delete Depth from this fight. And without that setup onto the Seraphine, she just moves back towards the choke point. Zekka can actually defensively ult there to save the fight. And after the initial combo goes off for Genji, you don't have the damage to win that anymore. But it was a two-part setup between Ruler on the Lucian and, of course, Peanut's flank there. And if they don't find that one pocket of vision, that one engage, they don't win this game. They win that fight. There were some subsequent mistakes, obviously, for DRX after that, but then the, that lead that they got, or that control of the map that they got there from that Baron is what allows them to take the ups, uh, the, the Elder fight. So there's a lot to talk about here. I'm like, yeah. really excited, but we got to move on. Yeah, there's, there's actually just <laughs> too many moments. And as we wait for the POG, or the, the ruler of the game, as I like to call it, because his back massage on the entirety of DRX from over the wall, that identification of the moment, just beautiful. Let's have a look at the player of the game. Bring it up onto your screen because, uh, yeah, I think that, like, this was a heroic effort from Genji because they had to adapt on the fly. And this guy with over a thousand damage per minute on the late game Lucian, yeah, exactly. he was schooled in the early game yeah. and then late game dominated. This is the play right here, though. This one where he forces out the ult, flashes away, then kites back against King and survives while Peanut's on the other side. This was the moment that Genji actually won the game. Yeah. And of course, after that, he has this really sick angle here because they have a lot of vision control. They have Pryo because Kyoshik was picked right before this, and they are not set up DRX, so rough for them there. But uh, it was mentioned on the cast, the crit change to Lucian's ultimate really allows him to do quite a lot of damage in the late game. One vote goes over to Peanut. I think it's I think it's a reasonable vote. No, it's I don't. China. I 100% I mean, disagree. He's very Sorry. popular over um, there. I don't know whether it's Teddy on the cast desk over there on the Chinese broadcast, but uh, look, if you're listening, Teddy, disagree. Disagree one 100%. Um, but yes, uh, amazing work from Ruler. Amazing work from Genji. Getting back on the horse after this for DRX is going to be really difficult, but they do have to get towards that game number two. So we will do as well. Let's throw it back to the casters. Thank you, Carpet Space Astronauts, for that wonderful breakdown. There was so much to talk about from that game. It really was an awesome one. So back and forth, really interesting uh, drafts as, yeah, Ruler deserves it 100% feel kind of bad that he was denied the 13 out of 13, but that's okay. He still wins it. Chronicler, what are you expecting now for game number two? What can you expect? That's a tough question. Um, I would personally not mind to see the Rx run it back with some adjustments to their comps. I think that as much as we saw them be able to win team fights, especially in mid game, 
Uh, the damage I put in late game became too big, and the, and the really big thing for me was the lack of agency uh, that the composition had. With Shivana in top, not King's Orn, which if I remember correctly was banned because it's Kingen, so that's just kind of a given. Uh, but without a hard engage top and, and with two enchanters, uh, we really saw them run into a lot of issues with actually forcing plays when they did have a really big lead and when they were in full control of the game. Uh, so I'm expecting them to see they pivot towards something where they are able to dictate the pace of the game a little bit more. Because against Genji, uh, Genji just showing in that game that it's not enough. It's not enough to just have a good comp. Uh, you need to actually take control, take matters into your own end and win the game. And Callista bans and, and, and things like that will really help uh, Gen G with what, what DRX normally might try to throw at them in terms of aggressive draft. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As we will see our first change up in the draft, it will be the Yumi that comes out a little bit earlier here instead of the third ban, I believe it was in game number one. Corky also banned away once again. As let's see, okay, so the Azir is going to be targeted. They say, no, that's just he's just too good on that pick, he's just way too much damage. Even the split pushing was <laughs> really annoying. And so they will just take away the Azir from Chobi. Expecting to still see the Wukong ban here. Uh, with the cock oh, okay. Mm. So Wukong first pick now available here uh, for DRX if they want to still go and prioritize that. Um, and even though Genji was able to win, uh, they were definitely struggling a little bit. Can also just first pick the Lucian here. I uh, can go for the Seraph. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't mind it personally. Can also go for Senna Seraphine, Ash Seraphine are all still available. Um, but I would be very surprised if uh, Genji just don't lock in the Lucian at the very least here again. Nami, I think you can do next rotation. If you go Lucian Wukong here, yeah. I think you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, I, I think just continue trying to play your game. Roller looked insane on the Lucian, so just get him that pick once again. Uh, the laning phase shouldn't be as difficult because, of course, there is no Kog'Maw this time. I think they've set it up really nicely with the Kog'Maw ban. They say, okay, we're expecting this to come out here once again. If they want to go for the Wukong, we can still pick the Lucian and give Ruler a chance to carry us in game two once again. So let's see what pick number two will be. I think this will definitely be a oh. telling pick as the NAR priority has been up and up and up this week and once again going to be picked up very early on very high prior on that and after the last game I, I, i'm not surprised to see genji really opt into a much more aggressive drafting style uh getting a good read on drx where they're strong how they play and then really just going for uh, as aggressive as uh, of a draft as you're going to get uh, i think it can work out quite nicely for them Expectations is the Nami here, because the lane's still the highest level of oppressiveness with this. And the RX, they say, well, we had an enchanter with uh, with with a big team fight at all, but what if we just took two instead of one? Well, will that fix our <laughs> issue? And if Genji don't ban Orn here, then yes, but they will ban Orn. And that makes it really awkward because Sejuani is a pick that isn't as high value if Trundle's available, and then DRX might run into the exact same issues here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen as Genji. They also hovered the Jarvan, kind of saying, oh, you should probably ban that away again. We might pick it here. And they are, in fact, going to ban it away. And you see that the GP band here by the side of Gen G. So Doran uh, obviously going for the NAR this time around. They will try to make uh, that lane a little bit easier for him. Orn would be my expectation. If Gen G don't bend the Orn, then their read is that Kingen, even if he does play it, will get put so far behind against Doran's NAR that it's not something to really worry about. Um, definitely Cole that can backfire because the, the, the Orn would shore up so many of the weaknesses that the DRX comp had last time around. Uh, but Genji putting faith in Doran, and Doran has actually been playing a lot better. Don't think his GP game was very impressive, not able to hit any big impact barrels, which really is uh, one of the uh, big reasons why you, why you picked the champ. Yeah. 
He hit his cannon barrages, hit though. That would look good. You know, good. Let's, uh, I agree. <laughs> pat on the back for pressing his R button, you know? Not bad. But actually, I mean, sometimes that is what Gangplank is there for. <laughs> We're thinking about the Silas. Uh, could be a bit of a counter pick. Or, you know, like, they're trying to pick it before. Yeah, it's big away. Uh, Kingen picks it up. So that is going to be the pick here for Chovy in this game. Okay. Uh, I, the Silas into Nar is completely sacking your laning phase, but the, the value of the pick as a whole into Nar is extremely obvious. Also, I think Lucian is not bad. Uh, Tidal Wave is, is, is not going to be horrible either, and uh, I'm sure that Peanut's going to pick another team fighter here. As Peanut's giggling. Uh, and I'm hoping that that's not because of Hackram, yeah. even though the Hackram worked out quite well, and I, I do think it's a pick that can have decent value. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, 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 Peanut. The least Peanut. sin counter, Skarner! Oh! <laughs> Wait! Yes. It's Skarner! The Scorpion himself! He is Someone... on the rift again! Someone call what Captain Flowers! Happening? Skarner versus <laughs> Seraphine, are you kidding me? Oh, oh no! Skarner. This is definitely one way to say, I'm going to flash ult you and no more team fighting for you. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, guess what? You can't mute. Impale doesn't work. Can't be done. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. <True. laughs> Oh, and, and the Arax have another composition where a lot of the damage is going to be either King and uh, on, on the Gwen or the Ethereals. And, you know, if you get Skarnered, uh, not a lot of counterplay to that. Now, there is a lot of peel available here, and a Peanut's Happy Feeding or the Vision Control from Genji is going to be need to be exceptional because there is Handshake and there is Seraphine's entire kit that's just kind of a nuisance um, at trying to actually get on top of anyone if you're a champion without dashes. But I'm just excited to see Skarner back. I can't wait. The overall composition of Gen G, very high levels of Pryo, very, very short range, and destined yeah. to kind of bully your opponent into uh, an, an early deficit and then just snowball the game. Because once you get a grip, once you get impaled, uh, the game ends pretty quickly. <laughs> From ahead, they can dominate. Let's see if it happens as we go on to the rift for game two. And here we go as we hop onto the rift here for game number two. I wonder how DRX feel after kind of, you know, they came out with their crazy draft and then uh, they went ahead and picked the Seraphine, showing the Pryo on this pick once again. The rest of it kind of standard, but then the Skarnered, they got Skarnered. I wonder how that makes them feel. I don't, I don't even know how I feel about the Skarner. Oh, he's going. Oh. Oh. So, <laughs> Skarner, pick that we that's, haven't seen uh, in quite a while. That's a win for Skarner. Yeah, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, yeah, that was an important. That was important to mention. Mm -hmm. uh, Very important. If you have, <laughs> if you haven't seen Skarner in a while, join the club. He's one of the least popular champions in the, in the game. Um, uh, oh, he went treasure hunter as well. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me, Peanut? <laughs> as uh, these things we see on the ground are spires, and spires are. Uh, don't fight Skarner when he has when he's in a spire that he controls. It basically brings the game of Dominion uh, back to Summoner's Rift, which remember that 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 game, man. Yes, I remember. I remember Dominion. That existed for a while, and uh, uh, what it means is, it, it, although this build is not going to utilize it as much, you have a lot of builds where. Uh, you play the Skarner more like a duelist, where you go for the Conqueror, and particularly in solo queue, this can be quite good, as there is a lot more skirmishing, as it was, in fact, Pioshik himself that played this against <laughs> Johan. Revenge uh, for people. Johan! Oh, wait, yeah. no, Johan won that game. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, but, because especially within the uh, within the Spires, you get a lot of extra uh, fighting stats, so you become actually quite hard to duel with. 
especially with the lockdown that you have available uh, and the continuous spam of your queue. But this is a Predator build and it's a competitive game, so Peanut is indeed just an impale button. Uh, expecting to see Chem Tank uh, and expecting uh, to see him just flash on top of any target at a given point. Uh, drag mm -hmm. them back to his lair and feed either Ruler or Chovy until the game is done. Um, yeah. And, and Predator's you know, gonna as help this with that. Game, as this game comes along, uh, I'll be wanting to see Gen G have a pretty nice lead because eventually people will pay the QSS tax and yeah. eventually, um, you know, there is going to be a ton of damage here from the Gwen, from the Aphelios, and you know, very short range, you have, I, I mean, I suppose you have Ruler on Lucian. He proved that he can scale himself, as this is an extremely Q play from Peanut, avoids the vision. He will get the flash out of Zekka, just like that. Very simple, just showing his face in mid lane. Really nicely done. Sneaks past Piochek, fake sense of safety. As, uh, what? Well, yeah, that was okay. <laughs> Until uh, Ruler uh, hits level 3 and uh, makes use of his free skills. Um, because the Renata, obviously very, like the, the early, early levels, still going to be kind of hard to out-trade, but we do see that in these short bursty trades, uh, especially once this wave is going to be clear, it's going to be very hard for Deft and Barrel to match, and a single bubble is going to mean a decimation, uh, unfortunately, for the DRX bot side, as... Uh, mm. I'm glad you pointed it out because it's not just the QSI stacks, it's also overall the composition of Gen G being very short range uh, into Infelios and into a Gwen. Um, and I think they have a lot of tools that allow them to kind of overcome that because with Impale it becomes really easy to, to pick people off and they do have a lot of power themselves with Gnar and, and the Silas. Uh, but it is definitely a game, unlike the previous one, where I feel like the tools for Gen G will kind of diminish as the game progresses um, and it will become a lot harder for them to uh, to really deal with what DRX have here as Peanut, he just wants the full clear, he just wants to hit 6 ASAP so uh, not expecting to see any action out of him early. Yeah, I mean he, he got the flash in mid and now he's going to hit 6 and then he's going to flash on Zekka and get first blood. <laughs> yep. that, that that's the play guys yep. uh, I'm just letting you know <laughs> it's gonna happen it in about two minutes and that's you know I, I don't come from the future that's just what I saw here on the script but yeah I mean that that's the power you know the fact that he was able to get like the bonus flash out this early on is so ridiculous it's really big yeah he's Skarner he hits level six he flashes on you he's really fast with predator Zeka's gonna have to play this extremely patiently very passively, you might even have to call Pioshik over to just kick away the Skarner potentially. Let's see if that works out. He does have really nice wave clear, of course, but he needs to at least step up to the wave in order to pull that off. 315 gold for Pioshik. As a. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so that, you gotta wait is, until this out, really? outer circle comes in, and then you can retake it. I was about to say, it. he's just gonna wait? I mean, there's no camps up, so he can, he can afford to. He's got a spawning. Do you know, just gonna spot Pyoshik. They see each other, a bit of a 3v3 on the bottom side. Ruler is gonna get Gravitum down. That's a handshake back into the Gravitum of Death as he flashes forward, and he's just perma-slowed. Ruler can't get away. It's first blood given over to Death. On the Aphelios, that is massive, as at least Peanut is able to pick up the Rift Scholar at least, but still, First Blood is given over to Deft. Oh, big disaster there, and it's, it feels really bad, but either have to flash or you have to cleanse, uh, either flash or cleanse the handshake, as we knew that uh, that Pioshik was there, and, and uh, Gen.G is just trying to shove in the wave, Peanut is just there to be, act as a deterrent, but the moment that Peanut leaves, um, you are not going to be able anymore to to, to to win because you don't have a deterrent. So you're just fighting one member down. Peanut going to forego his earliest level 6 spike to pick up an early Infernal Drake. That is definitely something that I really like because it allows them to possibly scale into an early soul win con, uh, which this composition is definitely able to utilize very, very well. 
Yeah, Barrel trying to be cheeky here, but he's literally a level five Renata glass, so it's yeah. not going to amount to too much. And yeah, this is going to be that first Infernal Drake picked up here by Peanuts. So now he's going to go as an Encore hits. Chovy will flash away. It was only Barrel that was coming up. We did have, of course, Bioshik around as well. Here's the Encore from him. Not going to do much except clear the wave. Now it looks like he's playing it very safe because he does not have vision of exactly where Pioshik is. As here comes Ruler, coming up from the bottom side. And he's going back down to the bottom lane. Note that the Deft is currently sitting in Crescendums, but don't think he will have enough. Uh, I'm not sure what the ammo is right now uh, in case Genji does heavily commit. As you pointed out in the previous game, Genji have been very reluctant to heavily commit to any play. And yeah, i uh, going to look at this again. Uh, as mentioned, you either need to flash or cleanse uh, earlier because this is just the, uh, unfortunately, the worst of both worlds. Do use your flash. As, oh, uh oh, uh-oh, Barrel is all alone. Really nice handshake is going to be pretty massive. Meanwhile, Peanut is just doing the Rift Herald. There are some go pings up here from the blue team from DRX, but not, oh, it looks like maybe Poshi can get here on time. Could come down to a smite fight. It is going to be pretty close as I would love to see that fight and not Deft <laughs> farming. But uh, it does look like Deft has a little freeze down there. Oh no, he's actually pushing it out. So um, yeah, Rift Herald taken here by Peanut will be looking to potentially drop that bot. As Wave stacked here. Very, very unfortunate position for Deft and Barrel. They need oh to get boy. the clear, but they're not getting it. They're not getting it. Peanut's like, hmm, who should I select to give over to Ruler? As it's not Jogoth, he doesn't make the nom nom noises, but you know he was feeling it anyway, as that was a free kill given over. Zeka had his flashback. He might as well just pick up the free kill on the bottom side. Yeah, pretty t telegraphed play as well, uh, coming through here from Genji. Not uh, coming out of nowhere and kill going over to the one man that you don't want to get fed as uh, DRX, which is Ruler. Gonna make your game infinitely harder if he is able to snowball in a similar fashion like he did last time around. And Peanut also going for the Axe Flash, so we'll be able to still utilize his summoner, even though, uh, as with Skarner, your flash is going to be on cooldown very, very often. Also, something we haven't really talked about yet is Chovy going for the first strike. Now, in this lane, I expect you to get effectively no value as... Yeah, they have, to, they have to try and play the wave. Just too late. He's basically just calling the whole play. Saying, okay, run, run in. I'm running down to the bottom side. And that's it. You know, pretty straightforward, very telegraphed, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, not really subtle to the Skarner, but he doesn't need to be scuttled, uh, subtle because he's a, he's a scorpion. And, and, <laughs> he's definitely you, not Scuttle ever... Crab either. He's oh, much better no. than Scuttle Crab. He is. Um, although I could see how you would confuse them, you know, if Scuttle Crab had a stinger. But do you know why the whole Skarner is very Skarner... offended by that? Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. But do Can't you know what, you what, what the whole... <laughs> okay, well... You know what? I'm not, and I'm not gonna give you my no, little moment anymore. No, I want to hear. What do you have to say? No, no, it's not. It's not <laughs> happening, Valvis. Do you know what? Should what? Have, what? Should have? No, he should have not been a not not been offended on behalf of of, I'm sorry. of, of Skarner. No, I no. So I'm sorry. Uh, the <laughs> voice that's, if I remember correctly, Seraphine's like thing that she's standing on, and, and the voice that she is in touch with uh, is made from. I don't know the exact specifications of it, but basically it's, it's one of Skarner's people, and he's the uh, last one. So is is just going? in the thick of things. He is going to flash away. He's got Meganar here as well, but no Nar ult of it, as he used it in the lane. There's the wallop. He's trying to get away here, but it's not quite enough damage. The second he walked up to the lane, looks like he was definitely dead. Unfortunately, uh, oh no. they might just use this down in the bottom side again. Peanut is here. He's looking for that play. He doesn't have flash, so he'll just accept the kill onto Barrel and say, well, we can take down the turret and all five plates instead. No reason to try to die for death. Yeah, and Doran dying there is very unfortunate, but also doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things uh, because they get a full, full turret bot side and, and a crash, and 
Uh, rulers making sure that as many minions as possible die to this turret as well to deny them from death. And now he's a 2 0. And for the wing condition, Peanut feeding his carries. That part going very, very well. And I, I gotta kind of question BRX's call to play heavily towards this top side. Maybe not feeling like they're actually gonna be able to win these skirmishes. Um, because now, but side is bleeding so hard. Ruler is incredibly fed. And it becomes very hard, um, even with the kill that King is able to pick up here. That in of itself isn't really going to stand up to what the Ruler is going to be able to do. Yeah, can you imagine that King maybe was calling Pilshik up? He's like, okay, he doesn't have his Nar available. But this also, it's not too difficult of a play to see either, right? So it's almost like they kind of let it happen as you were mentioning they're playing around a the top side they're yeah. not keeping Goshik bot to to play around this kind of thing and i mean it's skarner you know like there's there's not a lot of summoners bot you just ganked there you just got to kill you can follow up with your predator you can dive you can drop the rift herald down there there's a lot of stuff you can do leaving the <laughs> aphelios and renata very vulnerable but drx kind of you know as you mentioned they're just like yeah that's gonna happen and there's nothing we can do about it so good luck and now there's no turret there's also even nearly two plates taken on the top side by Gorin, so he's doing just fine, even though he died. Doesn't really matter. And now Gen G are they have a vice grip on this game currently because they did need to get ahead with this comp, but if they do get ahead, <laughs> it is quite oppressive because you see enemy champion and you oh, kind of yeah. just press your buttons and you just kill them. <laughs> As Lahens flashes in, and yeah, they nearly killed Barrel. Definitely worth, as you see the teleport coming down here, and not sure if we're going to be putting this much wor uh, effort towards a Herald play, spawning in 30 seconds. Uh, definitely sideways are, are still very relevant, guys, 40 minutes into the game. Uh, but we're fighting, I guess. Kyoshik is... yeah, that's, um... Yep. Yeah, that that's a Skarner with Chem Tank. You're not really gonna do much against that. As here we go. Now we have the roots coming down. The Encore is going to hit the Nami, but the front line is huge. Berserk comes out and hits a lot, but the tidal wave is even bigger. A massive Infernum does hit that back line, and the Nami is quite squishy, and it will just be the one for one, but that is a kill traded to each AD carry on both sides. And Skarna making sure he gets that pesky Seraphine, drags her back, and this is one of the issues that you actually do run into as the Seraphine, is that if your beat drop does not take care of Peanut, he can text at you and predators at you and you die. Um, there, there isn't really a lot to be done about it. Now, on the flip side, uh, DRX is able to actually get themselves to scuttle here, but they might be forced to... Uh, obviously already gave up a kill. Rula now already sitting again. Going for the rapid fire can as second here for the second time in a row. And um, into the... Yeah, Cock Lulu, it made a lot of sense. Into the Aphelios, or into the Aphelios. I really wouldn't have minded him just going for collector seconds to really get a really big second item spike. Um, but overall, I'm loving what Genji is showing here. Doran is drawing so much pressure. Even that that, that death that he got, like it was, not, it was a good death. It wasn't a bad one. He was able to... Uh, ensure that uh, Pioshik was topside and as a result is also able to and, and I mean it's idea in an ideal world you bait out that gank and then not die um, but, but overall Genji's making very good use of the pressure and every lane is kind of winning and if every lane's winning and the jungler is making plays it becomes very hard to play the video game yeah We'll take another look here at this fight and how it begins. Uh, Ruler is very aggressive. He knows he has his team there, but also a lot of DRX around. Yeah, good bubble as well uh, there from from Lance. That keeps him alive for a little bit longer. And uh, the only unfortunate thing there is that Death is positioning very carefully, so he's not only able to pick himself up the kill, but also stays without range of Peanut. Ooh, I think at that point. Might not have had a flash yet or not want to take the risk and instead just wanted to go for Seca. And now uh, we are looking at a Cloud Soul for Skarner. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's terrifying. That's great. Yeah, that's that's very good. 
Uh, and, and I don't think the Erex going to be ready in a position to fight this, unlike last time around. I don't think they're necessarily strong enough. Deft is level 9, does have a fair amount of gold and a lot of support yeah. around him, but it's a lot harder than last time. The difference in this game between the Kog'Maw and the Aphelios is really palpable. You can you can feel it. I mean, they're going for the engaged Storm is setting up for this Meganar. Just trying to skirmish here and stop the Rift from going in. That's the pull on to Pilsic. The Encore is huge, though, as Pilsic will get away to Hostile Takeover as big as well. But look at where the damage is going. It's actually Gen G that are chipping away these health bars, as Toby will get away very low on health. But Ruler just doing way too much damage in this fight. He is going to push everybody back on low health. And now Gen G should be able to take this Cloud Drake. Oh, again, the amount of damage that Ruler is able to output is really, really big. Doran is able to soak as much as he did as... Uh, he just doesn't stop, does he? And this time around, there isn't really as big a deterrence. Death had to use both his summoners. And they get the sword point at 18 minutes into the game. Uh, after the first Drake was taken, they mentioned, ah, oh, you know what would be nice? An early Drake win condition, or an early Soul Rider win condition <laughs> yeah. for Gen G. And right now, they're sitting on three Drakes. Their most important member is monstrous monstrously fed and I'd argue Pioshik's probably the worst target to actually hit him. Yeah. Um, and, and still they win the fight right because the big team fight ultimates by themselves are not enough there needs to be more damage and I don't think King and, and Devs are really in a position to get a lot of damage going. Doran looking for the solo here he's gonna miss that second uh, Barrel as now Kingen is following up here, and this is a Gwen we're talking about. The Snip Snip comes in a second time, and Doran is looking for another hop, but he does not have it. Kingen with the lower cooldowns will be able to survive and eventually pick up a solo kill himself. Okay, previous one, acceptable death. This one, very unfortunate. Uh, going really, really deep, if you do get that kill, uh, your 1v1 becomes a lot easier, but if you lose that kill, then DRX get a different anchor point in this game, right? A, a Fed Gwen in a side lane can be really, really hard to deal with, even if you do have Peanut, because it still requires you to actually respond. Um, so feeding King is like one of the very few ways that I think DRX still able to maintain somewhat of a presence in this game. Uh, but it, you're gonna have to do that like two or three more times uh, for it to really be a problem. I think that yeah, Doran felt with the four stack Q being used and him having Mega, he had an angle, uh, but it's Gwen with Rift Maker, so... Yeah, I mean, he's calling like, oh. Meanwhile, in live, Ruler just double kills them. He just takes lives. I mean, he didn't even have to flash. Peanut still has him pale. He just took two kills by himself alone. Yeah. And now that is going to be Baron at 20 minutes and a half into this game. And we can safely say... <laughs> there was say, that sign that said ruler rules. I mean, it, it, it's very on point. Yeah, we, we can we can safely say now, Valdez, that the trait Seraphine for Lucian uh, does not work against Genji. That, that, is the, that is the lesson that we're learning here. Uh, it's not even this... I think the Seraphine part of it is makes a little bit of sense, but if you know you're not going to pick Lucian, uh, don't. Don't do that. Don't get through the Lucian. Because look at... Uh, <laughs> What do you do? What? There wasn't, there wasn't even <laughs> anyone else involved. It was yeah. just him. Yep. Got him. I mean, he, he just, like, that's just not fair. Who's <laughs> now Jovi? No. He's going to hop away. Peanut says, oh, I'm going for the Lee Sin again. Um, okay, actually going to get enough damage to take him down. Looks like maybe sm smote him there at the very end is Lucian. Uh, Ruler wants more kills. You know, seven is just really not enough, as by himself he does 85% health to the side of Deft. As now we've got everybody getting into the mix here. Chovy even just split pushing. He's like, nah, you know what, I'm just going to play BDE. Uh, very happy to do that. That is what he does. As now just chipping away at this turret. Going to take this one down. Doran not going to go down either. And uh, Chronicle, I don't know, doesn't doesn't feel like DRX have an answer. I mean, the the wind is totally taken oh, out no. of their sails by one champion. Oh no, it's it's this this one's done. Yeah, they, they, this is the this is the nightmare scenario. Oh. <laughs> um, and it never ends. It doesn't. No, the uh, the as much as I like enchanters and, and having a two of Gwen is very nice. 
Uh, wait, they, they got a free Peanut. Okay. What yeah, nice mean? little kick does come in, but Peanut wait. is extremely tanky. Oh, that's a thousand gold over to Pilshik. Um, hmm. And that's hmm. with 50 seconds until the Cloud Soul is going to be available. Is Peanut looking for a bit more, but Handshake does come in. Teleport uh -oh. available. And uh -oh. now, Gen G, Toby's going forward. He's like, yeah, let's let's fight. We don't need ruler. Let me prove that Toby rules, too. As the hospital takeover comes in, the rest of the team cannot join, but the Needles are getting a really nice chunk of damage in as the rest of them trying to get in. That is a oh. massive dodge from Doran. He made that look so easy. But I'll tell you guys, that was not easy, especially as he goes into Meganar. And, yeah, just going to sidle his way out of this one. Wallop comes in. Handshake misses. Just throwing out boulders. Okay. Doesn't give a damn. And now Ruler is back. So, yeah. <laughs> now DRX have to leave. Your fun is Your over. Your party invitation is rescinded. You'd, oh, Peanut. No, 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 no. Don't. Oh, he's just going for the 15 ball. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. Just making sure of all this. Uh, as they get the soul. And... That was a that was a small moment, and if Baron is up, if this happens on a different part of the map, then th there is a, a world where maybe that helps, and and, and they they take the the kill and ruler, and it doesn't go to Pioshik, but it goes to Deft, right? Deft gets a thousand gold in the pocket, then uh, you're going to be feeling a lot better about the whole deal. But it is a mistake from Genji. It happens, but it should not have a really big impact on the game here. Uh, as Chovy now back with a Banshees as well. And I, we, we have the carpet space. I'd love to know how much damage Chovy has done with, with first strike, because obviously this is a first strike that you pick for post laning phase, in addition to picking it uh, because of the burst it provides in like the first three second window. As we're going all the way back. But I know what I happens. Don't even like... <laughs> like it's just, just pe so far. Just peanut getting the Oshik. I mean, going in there was the right call. It's not gonna do a lot. This is much more relevant because this is just give up peanut. It's like still a minute until the Drake. It's fine. Um, Ruler's like I got. But they go this. a little high. Have ten health. <laughs> yeah. Bit of an oopsie there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, he's got three items. He has IE, so uh, you can see in the damage dealt, he has nearly double the second member, which is basically just Doran trading with Gwen. So yeah, it's kind of a one-man show at this point in time. Let's see if he can complete the final act. That's really the uh, the question, I believe. Is Chovy just going to throw out that Encore? Not going to land. So thus far, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, you know, thus far we are looking at a 150 gold earn and only 160 extra damage from the first strike. So I, I, I'd love to, maybe they'll ask Chovy in the, uh, I, I guess he's not getting PRG because it's going to be two root of PRGs, but uh, if, if, if anyone could ask him, that'd be lovely. Uh, I'm, I'm always really interested to hear his thought process because he is very deliberate with his rune choices and... Um, the issue, of course, for Silas is just that him actually starting combat is kind of hard because he's melee. And uh, makes sense that he's not able to proc it as much as Pina is running. Yeah. I, I, I feel like he's almost looking for Pyoshik. He's like, no, nah, I'm not going to commit onto the Gwen. I want to get Pyoshik. <laughs> it's kind of like a personal thing almost is what it's looking you like. You banned my Poppy. I just yeah. want to play Poppy. Come on, <laughs> please. I just, I just want to show the world how strong Poppy is. So, what's next for Peanut? We've seen a lot of Poppy. Now we've seen Skarner, Mundo, Udir, Shivana. Hmm. I could see Shivana for sure. That's definitely one of the ones I could see. But it's AP Shivana, and he's cackling the whole time while playing it. <laughs> and emoting uh, nonstop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dabbing, dabbing Pingwing the whole time. Yeah. Uh, we're just doing Baron. Uh, there is yeah. zero vision on the top side of the map here for DRX. Look they at see it now. <laughs> <laughs> they're down, they're down 10,000 gold, so 
and they're, yeah, it's just not really a uh, time or a chance for them to get in, so King and just gonna continue split pushing bot side. Not really much else they can do about it. Key takeaway, uh, again, um, is that the adaptation from the Arax in, uh, from the Arax in terms of draft here doesn't really solve a lot of their issues that they had in game number one. But that, that's not really what the game is about. Uh, it's more so about Genji having a Lucian that is sitting on four items at 27 minutes. He just bought a and collector. Yeah, just don't, <laughs> don't, don't... Sometimes we need to learn our lessons, and I think the Rex after this game, will have learned our lesson, and will never leave Lucian open in his current state, even after the nerfs. Just not... not do, don't do it anymore. Just don't... There is no outsmarting. Especially not against Ruler. I mean, this is... <laughs> you know, we, even with the cult I think we saw even yesterday. We saw yesterday, I forget which team it was, but they left it available. I think it was up against someone, right? Home of Life. And they were like, yeah, you can go ahead and take it. And then they almost were able to win. But, like, against Ruler, it's it's not really an option. <laughs> like, just don't even consider it. As, let's see what Genji can get going with their relatively low range. It's kind of hard for them. They do have Peanut inside the base, though. So that's one way to kind of push them off of the turret. Ooh, look at him go! Yeah, he's going in! Not gonna get death, because death will have to flash. And Skarner is incredibly tanky, as all the team fight ultimates are coming out here. Ruler will survive those barrel, has to flash away from this one. But now we have Peanut down. He did his job, though. What is that damage? He just collected Pilshik's soul as no longer will the jungler survive in this one. Now we have Teleport down to the bottom side, as it looks like Genji might have just broke open the base. It's down will go the inhibitor. Ruler still frontlining with the Nami right behind him, as that should be two inhibitors, as maybe they will go for more. As they're looking for death, that's just gonna be the end of him. No takedown for him either. As now Chovy's just got a hostile takeover, trying to bring in more zoning for Ruler to pick up more kills and do even more insane damage. How is he just war tapping people? It is just not fair. That is going to be the end of this game right before 30 minutes as Ruler essentially just took it into his own hands. What a split from Ruler. Uh, he has been so incredibly dominant thus far. And we've seen him uh, last time against T1. He was playing much more supportive picks, Ash most notably. And seeing Ruler pop off on a carry like that, very exciting. Uh, wasn't a, wasn't a, which we've seen so many of, wasn't really a big Pina day, even though he had a great game. This was not a Chovy day, of which we have seen so many. This, this was a Ruler day. Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, got Lucian twice, and 1v9 and and that was the end of it really like i'd like i'd love to make it more complicated but it, but it's not uh he got fed both times first time it took him a little bit of t a little more time and he had to had to really build up his items but this time around just decimation yeah it's really kind of insane i mean um obviously it did start all from the laning phase in game number one he was able to carry eventually in the late game just because he, you know, he was farming well. He didn't have a fun laning phase against Cog Lulu, but this time around it was like, not only did they give him Lucian, but they also didn't draft anything to really challenge it in the lane. So he got a free lane, he got free kills, as that is a very strong Chovy, um, ripped, shredded wow. Chovy, I should say. Um, yeah, uh, Ruler essentially got a free lane and they, it's it's ruler. He's gonna he's gonna take a bite and then he's gonna take a chomp out of the whole thing afterwards. Uh, really making the most of what DRX were giving him. And, and we've we've seen some of these ruler moments, you know, that we dubbed lovingly over the last couple of years. Uh, even in this game where he gets caught, where he like goes in with ten health. But the really big difference between the form of ruler in this split and in previous splits is that. It never feels like they actually matter anymore, right? Like, if he does get caught, which doesn't happen that often, it has no consequence. And uh, every play that he's able to make, especially on these extremely proactive AD carries, just working out swimmingly. Uh, for DRX, it is a 
experiment that didn't quite work out. Their priority on the Seraphine uh, was something that I personally don't mind as much, but it will be marred by it being a trade for Lucian. And in that scenario, even I, a stalwart Seraphine defender, find it hard to make a case because Lucian just provides, especially if you're a good proactive AD carry, with so much You saw the, the, the double taps he did, and it's both the name of his passive and what happens to Beryl here. What do you do? They just don't get to lane. This was the second time that he died, and that's because he's trying to fight with like 200 <laughs> health. He doesn't have to do that. Um, it's really just having fun because he knows that he essentially just carried this entire game by himself. Uh, you know? Yeah, he's like, just kill Aphelios, he has no flash. <laughs> and he did. Seraphine to flash. He's saying, uh, give me the... the it's like, whoa, this is awesome. <laughs> Everybody's just like, almost speechless, they're like, whoa. <laughs> Kind of insane. As, uh, yep, yeah, he's gonna yeah. get two games in a row with a thousand damage per minute. Yeah, ruler I, rules. I, 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 <laughs> ruler rules. That's that's the lesson of today. Fun that Peanut brought back the Skarner. You know, great, great on him. Uh, that that was fun. It was very entertaining. But <laughs> overall, I did. This was a game that was a snowball from bot side. And that was that was the end of it. So good luck with this one, I, I'd say to our, our lovely astronauts because um, it's a it's a toughie. Yeah, I, I don't imagine there's as much to say about this game, but I'm also very curious to see what they do have to say about this game. As we will hand it over now to the guys on the carpet space. Take it away. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for that uh, beautiful intro, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Analyst Chairs and Collaborative Carpet Space. It is a beautiful, beautiful place, and we're very glad that we're here, even if, as they rightly say, it's not a whole lot to talk about when it comes to that. Yeah. Stuff. So first, I'm going to correct Chronicler. Um, it's not called Double Tap. It's called Light Slinger, um, just so that you know. Colloquially, um, called, colloquially called Double Tap. Yes, we, are, we never actually say Light Slinger ever. We only ever say Double Tap. However, it is, in fact, called Light Slinger. See, you bought us a lot of time for this. Uh, for this what game. I need to do, so, because th this is just the ruler show, and that's now, all we really need to say. Instead of Aphelios Renata here, there were a lot of options that DRX could have gone for here with the Seraphine. They had the Senna opportunity. They also could have played something like a Trundle here or looked for... Zeri early. was available yeah. as well, theoretically, but doesn't go as well yeah. into uh, the old Lucian. So they, they could have had... There were a lot of ways they could have actually played around the bottom side differently. We've seen a lot of teams you know, prioritize those early ganks on the Lucian Nami so they don't get as much power there. The Skarner that came through at the end for Genji was really perfect for actually putting pressure both in mid and bottom. But the game became so much about Ruler that like we don't really even talk about Chobi this game. Like it was it was really sad. We had a bunch of Chobi stats prepared and some things we we're gonna go into. We we're like, oh Silas could pop off this game. You could steal that Seraphine. Uh, we'll talk about it some other time. Yep, we don't actually <laughs> need to mention that at all. Um, I do want to talk about the the Skarner just for one moment because what popularized Griffin all the way back when and the team that, you know, Doran, Chovy, and Lahens are all originally from and where they came to fame, it was all about Thresh Skana plays. Of course, it was Tarzan that was yep. playing the Skana at the time, but it is really, really cool to see that sort of style come back in and see that influence of, uh, I guess it was CB Max at the time, but just Griffin as a whole being brought here into Gen G. Just really, really cute. Let's get into the highlight reel though. And this is just Ruler being Ruler. And he does have uh, Peanut here, of course, Death out of position. Definitely had no right to be in the lane here, but yeah. after these, like that first kill comes out, there is nothing DRX can do for the rest of the game. The rest of the game. And after these two initial picks, Ruler literally can just walk up and kill people. And he does many times. Um, and notice in this fight how he just avoids everything. He's sitting in the back and is just doing insane amounts of damage. Kites back. And then this is where, this is the moment where like the game was over. Yeah. It was like, I will kill two people by myself. He doesn't have a Yumi on him. He gets a Nami E. And until the final fight of the game, he had 100% kills, not kill participation. Every kill in the game was his. He did not have a single assist. 
And only half of his kills were shared by Peanut. Actually, less than half, and three yeah. of his seven. He just popped off so hard and got so far ahead that, like, the rest of the game was just like an afterthought. We didn't have to talk about the Gwen. Gwen was trying to scale. Def's like, I'm playing Aphelios. Maybe I'll be relevant later on. No, you will be under a turret and then still also die. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and I just I just want to defend some of what we were talking about yesterday on the broadcast when Nongshin was trying to play the, the Lucian Nami and utilize it the way Ruler did here. If you're not proactive, if you're not basically frontlining as this Lucian and getting all of the advantages, it doesn't work like this. It's not just pick this lane combo and you win. It does work for Ruler though. Let's have a look at the final fight here. And uh, once again, as uh, Ruler just throws his wallet at DRX, like this was a cavalcade of weirdness uh, for I mean, Genji at the beginning. And then Ruler's like, Nah, I guess I'll well, just win the game. Peanut basically sacrifices himself so that Ruler uh, will not have to deal with all of that CC. He's like, oh, okay, <laughs> wait, the CC is gone? I will just two-tap people. Yep. And uh, that's what he does. He's like sitting here, he's like, oh, are you in range of my autos? No, I'll kill your inhibitor. Or yes, I will kill you. Um, oops, might have stepped a little bit close there. As uh, Zekka's trying his best to shield and heal some of his damage, but like, it just doesn't matter. And once Doran has his Narbar, they're like, all right, let's just push the end. It doesn't matter. And uh, we're going to watch all these highlights again a second time because he's going to pick up his second POG back to back here today. Yep. So we'll, we'll get another shot of this. But I, I do agree with what you're saying. We talked about yesterday Ghost um, Lucian not working out. Their jungler didn't play around bottom side. They overstepped in lane, whereas Ruler was measured but pulled the trigger when it mattered most to get those kills. Yep, let's get into POG and give it over to Ruler so we can get into his solo interview. 988 on the DPM did exactly the same amount of damage, 29.5 as the 2950 that the game length was, and he was just an absolute monster. He did the same amount of damage, basically 1,000 per minute, both games, but in completely different game states. This time, it was the Lucian that got accelerated early against the Kog'Ma Lulu. Obviously, it was a different story. He had to play a lot slower, didn't have those Yeah, it was advantages. late game Lucian. Right? Yeah, so it's really cool that we got to see two sides of Ruler's Lucian in the same series because DRX gave it to him twice, went for a similar drafting style with the Seraphine. And uh, I mean, we get to see why he's so good at both parts of the game. People like to talk about the Ruler ending, but we got to see the Ruler beginning, middle, <laughs> and end in this series. He's just, he's too good. He is just too good. And he's one of our veteran players, one of the older players in the LCK. Just still has hands, man. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yep. Um, all of these other six that you can see underneath him also sitting on 400 points. There are so many of them, as he did manage to get 25 out of 26 of the votes. And thankfully, we have the 25 out of 26 man alongside. So uh, let's throw it over to Jason for some translation of the interview. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason for the Roller Solo POG interview, joined by Subin, our beautiful host of the LCK. Congratulations on a clean two victory. To a victory, you guys are the first team to hit seven wins here in the LCK summer. It was a very rough game and series, but I'm happy that we were able to actually make a 2-0 victory. And also, you won POG back to back, especially in game two. You got 13 out of 13 POG votes. We've seen a lot of ruler P solo POG so far. I was not expecting POG for game two, so I was also kind of surprised that I didn't. I actually got the POG for game two because I got fed thanks to Skarner's early gank. So I thought Peanut was going to win the POG for game two. However, your performance on that Lucian was just so explosive that everyone had to vote for you. So we had first pick Seraphin from DRX, and then they completed Kogma Lulu comp for Deft and his support. So how did Genji react to their comp? So when we were preparing for the draft on the red side, there is, uh, we knew that when we lock in Lucia and Nami together, it's gonna be 100% Kogma Lulu as a counter. So we were like, let's just hold on, you know, let's just try to play out the lane and see how it goes out. And yeah, so the matchup was something we expected, so it was not that too bad. Just like you said, well, Genji was not having a good time early on. How did you guys manage to come back? So in the end, Kogma always have 
has to rely on that flash summoner spell. So if we find one single play that can force his flash out, we'll be able to close out the game and get the win. So we were looking for that angle throughout the entire game. Do you re remember the Elder fight? Let's take a look at this replay together. It was actually you opening this team fight as an AD carry. What was in your mind? I was looking at the opponent's position, and then Kogmo and Lulu were actually split. So I was telling Lians that I'm going to flank, give me E, and I will be able to just go in. And thanks to that, Genji was able to completely turn the table around. Well, we all know that Lucian is really strong in lane and early game, but we never knew that this Lucian can just carry the late game as well. You had more than a thousand DPM in game number one. We didn't see um, too many ruler Lucian so far. Were you practicing on that? I mean, I've been practicing Lucian always, but I was always fully ready to try that on stage. So you guys played Lucian Nami comp for two games in a row. Even though you were able to pop off on that pick, well, DRX um, managed to or decided to let it through one more time. I think they kind of prepared a strategy into it, maybe Seraphin. I don't know too much about it, but yeah, maybe I guess they were ready to counter it with their strategy. And we had Skarner from Peanut after more than a year, and we are so curious to find out why did that pick came through this time around. Was that from Peanut, or was that something from the coaching staff? So Peanut... Uh, was trying to give us or share us some options what we can choose for the second rotation of the pick and one of them was Garner and we thought yes Garner sounds like a good idea so we wanted to give it a go I think Pina definitely had some good ideas and we were able to you know, play really well together with that pick and speaking of Seraphin, a pick that you mentioned earlier, this champion is now on top of the tier list, but Genji decided to actually always allow the opponent to take that pick. I mean, we did consider banning it, but we, there were so many other picks where we had to ban for sure, so we had to just let it through, and we decided to just play against it. Your next opponent will be Liv Sandbox. This team is on a five-match winning streak. They're doing great. They have a very explosive play style and performance, so I hope to have a good match together and have bring, uh, bring a lot of joy for the fans. And this is the end of the interview from Ruler and back to the Endless Carpet Space. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jisun, for the translation of the interview. Fantastic to hear from Ruler, and it was most definitely a Ruler ending today, Wolf. Yeah. As, uh, let's have a look at the standings and see where this puts Gen G. Spoiler, they're still at the very top. Yeah, so even if T1 2 0 is against Fred Brion, they'll still be, of course, that one game behind. So Gen G with a 2 0 victory here actually maintained their first place no matter what here at the end of week four. Had they lost game one and even still won 2 1 with a reverse sweep, it might have meant that T1 could have tied them tonight, but yeah. no longer possible. Yeah, now DRX moved down to fifth place. It's dangerous. Um, they could potentially be moving away from the west side if some of our uh, eastern side teams do play better. Speaking of which, we have one of them um, attending Low Park here, but they're up against T1. Going to be a very difficult last match, and it will be uh, in about an hour's time because Gen.G. Completed that 2-0 pretty quickly. So thank you so much for watching. We will see you after a quite long break for our final match of the week.
2라운드는 새로운 종목을 넣어봤습니다. 이름하여 촉각 퀴즈! 뭘까요? 여러분의 촉각과 상상력을 발휘해서 정답을 맞춰야 되는 그런 퀴즈거든요. 자, 그럼 양 팀의 첫 번째 선수 선발해 주세요. 네. 라스컬. 케이티 라스컬. 어, 라스컬. 어, 형, 저기서 탑. 너구리. 어, 너구리. 탑 대전 보여줘야지. 형, 이겨줘야 돼. <웃음> 자, 과연 포지션 순이냐 아니면 네. 여기서. 와, 아, 너구리. 이 박스 안에 이것만 없었으면 좋겠다. 딱히. 딱히 없어. 오, 라스컬은 상관없어. 네. 너구리는. 권리가 있진 않을 것 같아요. 아, 네. 자, 첫 번째 이제 저희가 문제를 진행을 할 텐데 자, 선수분들 이렇게 나와서 네. 구경하실 수 있도록 저희가 돼요. 시간을 네, 안내 쓰셨죠? 자, 오픈합니다. 하도록 하겠습니다. 아, 기다려, 기다려. 와, 기다려. 진짜 위기다, 이거. 네, 자, 자 요거예요. 네. 아, 쪼글러운 없네. 어떠셨어요? 보니까 잘 맞출 수 있을 것 같아요? 장원이 형, 얘도 쓰러질 것 같아요. <웃음> 쓰러질 수 있다는 얘기가 나왔습니다. 첫 번째 저희가 자. 진행을 해보도록 하겠습니다. 알겠습니다. 시작. 먼저 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 맞추면 돼요. 문어 문어 정답 문어 문어 땡 땡. 왼쪽은 다 해놓고. 나 이쪽 이쪽 아니에요 이쪽 아니에요. 저거 저거 만들어 만들어. 자 여기까지 계속 여기까지 계속 여기까지 계속. 아 너무 선수 안 들어갔는데. 오 사람 있는데? 잠만. 아 진짜 사랑해 아, 너무리 너무 아 정답 정답 낙지 정답 와 좋아 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 어. 와 고생하셨어요 어 고생했어 어 소름 돋았어 자 이제 실 실제로 확인하시고 어. 앞으로 오셔가지고 먹어요 먹어요 <웃음> 어저 진짜 너무 놀랐어요 <웃음> 옆에 잡아주고 <웃음> 자 이렇게 해서 어쨌든 첫 번째는 라스칼 순서 맞추면서 KT가 그렇죠? 1대 0으로 앞서 갑니다 순서 자리해 주시고요. 다음 선수에게 본인이 안대를 전해주시면 됩니다. 토스. 네. 네. 전해주시면 돼요. 본인이 선수에게. 다음 선수를. 재미를 위해 이번 판 좀. 아, 아 퍼즐을 퍼즐. 선택을 했고요. 오케이. 그리고 여기는? 나몽키야, 너구리의 너몽키야. 선택은? 너구리 누구? 어, 덕담인 것 같은데요? 덕담으로 아 선정이 되었습니다. 자, 그럼 저희 두 번째 문제 바로 준비해 보도록 하겠습니다. 어때요? 켈리 선수 보면서 약간 겁먹은 것 같기도 하고. 그러니까 뭔지 모르는 것 같은데? 제가 했으면 절대. 못했을 것 같아요. 어, 아리아는 그럼 본인도 맞췄을 수 있을 것 같아요? 제가 만졌으면 일단 절대 못 맞출 것 같아요. 아, 아 이건 문제 약간 난이도가 굉장히 네. 높습니다. 네. 네. 들어, 들어가기 전에 주먹으로 세게 쳐도 돼요? 아, 네, 누구를요? 네. 저를요? <웃음> 자, 그럼 이제 선수들 마음의 준비 되셨죠? 덕담 커즈? 네, 준비됐습니다. 자, 준비 시작! 오, <웃음> 예! <웃음> 뭘까용의 최종 결과는 KT 롤스터가 2대0으로 승리했습니다. 자, 또세 번째 퀴즈가 준비되어 있죠? 그렇습니다. 네. 저희 스롤파의 대표 코너라고 보시면 될것 음. 같습니다. 다 같이 외쳐볼까요? 마키! 일단 양 팀에서는 각 문제별로 두 명의 대표를 뽑아주시면 됩니다. 나온 대표는 바퀴 달린 의자를 가장 먼저 끌고 가서 테이블의 앞에서 턱을 대시고요. 정답을 말하면 됩니다. 자, 그러면 양 팀의 대표 두 명을 선발을 해 주세요. 네. 어, 캐니언 네. 등장합니다. 캐니언이 그러니까 등장했고요. 네. 어, 여기 미드 정글 나왔어요. 미드 정글이 어, 나왔는데? 자, 네. 여기 가자. 캐쇼 나왔어요, 캐쇼. 캐쇼. 가자. 아, 아 네, 케이트 나온 분들 정글로. 자, 이제 어. 앉아주시면 됩니다. 첫 번째 문제를 내보도록 할 텐데요. 다음 다섯 장의 사진은 과연 어떤 챔피언의 눈인지 눈이지. 5초 안에 정답을 순서대로 대시오. 정답을 알면 가서 네. 턱을 대고 말하면 됩니다. 턱을 대고 5초. 자, 커즈 도착했어요. 자, 커즈 도착. 
모르가나 신데라 카사딘 문도 박사 베베스 오! 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 뭐야 이거 오! 오! 뭐야 야 어떻게 맞췄어 너 이거 어떻게 알아? <웃음> 나 말파이트인 줄? 메카 말파이트 자 여러분 그래서 첫 번째 문제는 KT 로이스의 커즈가 정답이었습니다 두 번째 문제는 주관식이고요 초성 퀴즈입니다 문제 두개 나갑니다 문제 다 나와서 둘다 맞춰야 됩니다 둘다 맞춰야 되기 때문에 네. 나갔다가 하나 틀리면 적한테 네. 도움이 될 수도 있어요 캐니언 갑니다 캐니언 갑니다 어, 나 진짜 알모르겠어자 캐니언 카메라 보면서 카메라 보면서 밀첩송의 망토랑 BF 대고 야, 와, 정답! 야, 와, 정답! 정답! 우와, 대단해. 아니, 캐니언에서 민첩성의 망토 이런 거좀 어렵지 않아요? 많이 가봤어가지고. 이야, 아니, 정글러들이 지금 맹활약하고 그러니까 있어요. 코드 선수뿐만 아니라 캐니언 선수도 네. 지금. 세 번째 문제로 넘어갔어요. 선수 교체 어떻게 하시겠어요? 선수 교체 하셔도 됩니다. 이번 거는 조금 어려워요. 가보자, 오케이, 가보자. 오, 좋다, 좋다. 원딜 대신 서포터가. 네. 세 번째 문제 저희가 한번. 네, 보도록 하겠습니다. 2022 LCK 스프링 정규 시즌 솔로 킬 1위는 무려 30번의 솔로 킬을 아하, 기록한 문제 안 끝났습니다. 예. 라스칼입니다. 음. 자, 3위가 19번의 솔로 킬을 기록했습니다. 이 3위 선수는 어느 팀의 누구일까요? 어, 쇼메이커 나갑니다. 네. 일단 나가. 쇼메이커 나갑니다. 그래, 나가, 나가. 줄 일단 서, 나가, 줄 빨리 서. 나가. 줄 서. 젠지 초위. 땡! 땡! 정답! 다문 캐니온. 다음에 캐니언 땡입니다. 캐니 선수 본인 솔로 킬몇 텐지 이런 거 기억하세요 혹시? <웃음> <웃음> 아, 나, 나 진짜 아예 모르겠어. 나 진짜 모르겠어. 아, 자 스프링입니다 스프링. 정답. 젠지 룰러. 젠지 룰러 땡. 진수. <웃음> <웃음> 아니 마텀이잖아 마텀. 아 와서 침묵질. 아 바로 팀원들의 <웃음> 네. 비난이. 침묵질 아니 팬분들의 선물. 침묵 다시 하고 있어 그냥. 힌트 드리겠습니다. 힌트 드리겠습니다. 미드 라이너죠? 나 느낌 왔어. 나 느낌 왔어. 자, 미드예요. 정답. T1 페이커. 땡! 정답. 3위입니다, 스프링. 농신 BDD. 농신 BDD. 땡! 약간 라이프 선수들은 다 이제 지나간 선수들 챙기는 것 같다. 그러니까요. <웃음> 자, 정답. 정답. DRX 제카. 땡! 오, 이거 제카 아닙니다. 제카 아닙니다. 아, 제카 하려는데? <웃음> <웃음> 과, 광동 페이트? 광동의 페이트! 정답! 와! 와. 페이트 선수가 총 19회로 네, 3위였죠. 역시 같은 미드라인을 끼니 통하는 게 있어. 페이트 형 잘하네. 정답 마치 쇼메이커 선수 대신에 그러면 다번기와 다른 선수 도전하는 걸로 그렇게 가보도록 하겠습니다. 네. 자, 너구리 선수 등장. KT는 그대로 가나요? 라스칼. 라스칼. KT. 라스칼? 라스칼? 오케이, 라스칼 라이프와 너구리 덕담. 2022년 LCK 서머의 시작은 내구력 패치가 이루어진 대격변 메타입니다. 12.10 패치에서 강타를 가장 많이 쓴 정글러는 덕담. 정답. 다몬 캐니언. 다몬 캐니언. 땡. <웃음> 정답. KT 커즈. KT 커즈. 땡. 정답. 미느다. 브리오 넘티. 땡. 다몬 자랑이요. 정답. 티원 오너. 땡. 농심 드레드. 농심 드레드. 땡. 어 이제 다몬 기아의 턴이 왔는데. 그렇죠. 자 과연. 과연. 너구리. <웃음> 어 너구리. 카메라 보고 카메라 보고 하나 오플릭 오플릭 정답, 정답! <웃음> <웃음> 세 번째 라운드 바퀴즈의 승리팀은 다먼 키아였습니다 축하드립니다 <웃음> 스트리트 롤파이터 롤 파이터. 이 명예 전당. 전당에 오를 최종 승리팀 서머의 KT 네. <웃음> 자 축하드립니다 소감 한 번씩 들어볼까요? 여기서라도 우승해서 너무 좋네요. 야, 아, 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 언제나 승리는 좋은 거니까요. 허이 선수도 어, 팬분들한테 선물 줄수 있어서 너무 좋았습니다. 아, 아 맞습니다. 아, 그게 진짜 제일 음. 의미 있는 거니까. 열심히 잘 즐겨줘 우리 다먼기아 선수들. 또다 선수 어땠어요? 마지막에 이기면 너개 못하잖아 시전할 수 있어서. 아, 그렇죠. 아. 충분히, 충분히 좋은 것 같아요. 아, 마지막에 이겼기 때문에 괜찮다. 이것도 역시 뭐 게임을 하면 누구나 공감하는 거고요. 네, 뭐 재밌게 놀다 가는 것 같아요. 아, 다행입니다. 감사합니다. 자, 그럼 우리 스테이트 롤 파이터 다 같이 외치면서 마무리 해보도록 하겠습니다. 레디! 파! 감사합니다. 
많은 분들이 제보 영상을 보내주셨어요 음. 여러분들이 그 제보 영상을 보고 피지컬, 레지컬적으로 이분의 티어는 무슨 티어인지를 음. 만들어주시면 됩니다 일단 제가 장담하는데 여기 티어 높지 않을 것 같아요. <웃음> 제가 확실할 수 있는 거 올라프랑 자크는 매직거리에요. <웃음> 되게 치열하게 싸우는데 아, 되게 착하게 싸워요 아, 착하게 아, 살짝 그 스킵 던질 때야 스킵 던진다? 이런 느낌? 일단 거의 풀피인데 이걸 먹는다는 것부터가 <웃음> 아니 양상을 막왜 내놓은 건데 그러니까 맞아요 이게 맞아요 이게 그리고 자크큐도 그 예상에서 피한 거 아니에요 그냥 얻어 걸려서 피했어요 무빙 보면 알아 자크가 또 기본은 되어 있네요 큐 날리고 그 와드에다 하는 거는 아니야 난 자크 기본도 안돼 있다 생각하는데 <웃음> 있어. 오랩이 칠레판티 개기는 상황부터가 <웃음> 나도 그만하려고 그러긴 했어 <웃음> 왜온 거야 탑 애초에 어, 왜온 거야 <웃음> 저는 강의 상상해 보건데 여기 티어 한 실버 실버 아, 실버 어. 실버. 네, 실버. 실버. 진짜 높게 쳐줘야 골드고 만약 이 사람들이 혹시나 진짜 서프라이즈로 챌린저다? 제가 롤 접을게요 <웃음> 아, 제발 챌린저 정답은 골드입니다 아 여기가 골드라고요? 골드가 딱 어느 느낌이냐면 자기 스킬은 굴릴 줄 안다 딱 여기가 골드인 것 같아 그러니까 세조하니까 자기 스킬은 그래도 최대한 열심히 썼어요 자기 스킬은 잘 맞췄어 다음 거 보나요? 이거 나를 약간 서영식인가? 나를? 나를 큐 어디다 쓰세요? 아니까 그냥 뭐야 다시 아직 모두 의미가 있었겠지 아니 넘블이 피지컬이 좋은 것 같은데? 어 일단은 나그 라인 전은 약간 어, 개념이 없어. 그그 <웃음> <웃음> 그 있잖아 AI 전 하면은 어. AI 전 스킬 닫고 뒤로 빠졌다가 어. 다시 돌아가 빠지고 다시 돌아가 AI가 이렇게 한다. 아니 근데 나는 이해 안 가는 게 올라프 위치 알고 있던 거 아니야? 와드로 봤잖아 와드로 봤는데 어. 와드를 깔았다는 게 어느 정도 뭔가 센스는 있는데 음. 올라프를 처음 본 사람 아닌가 태어나서. <웃음> 도 보니까 예상은 했어. 음, 보니까. 와, 거 보니까. 어. 음. 마지막 한타는 좀 이제 같이 그냥 휩쓸린 거 같고. 음. 휩쓸렸다고요? 어. 마지막 한타 궁극기 보셨어요? <웃음> <웃음> 어. 저기서 큐를 어디다 던졌어야 돼? 이거야? 큐 앞에까지 왜 던져? 아. 여기서 깔리는데 어. 뭔가 아쉬우니까 나래가 들어가서 어. 아 우리 팀 잡아주십시오 하고서 뒤로 보내잖아. 음. 이거 한타가 좀 뭔가 음. 불리해 보이기도 하고. 음. 근데 나, 이거 보고는 모르겠어. 나, 나도 이거 두개 보고는 보겠어. 몰라. 왜냐면 어. 이거는 위에 동네에서도 충분히 이럴 수가 있어요. 이거 함정일지도 몰라. 이거 챌린저입니다. 이게 챌린저라고? 아니야. 아니, 아니. <웃음> <웃음> 근데 그래도 나는 교전에서 뭔가 하려고 했던 건 느껴져. 마르가 아니면? 아니 그냥 전체적으로 아, 그러니까 아, 적 팀도 우리 팀도. 럼블 이퀄라이저 좀잘 까는 거 보니까 뭐한 플랫? 저는 그래도 골풀? 골풀 사이. 골풀. 골풀. 이 영상은 마스터 샤이니님의 <웃음> 마스터의 라인전 나이가 누구라고요? 샤이님 아니 나나 진짜 이해 안 되는 거 아니 설명을 해봐 뭐야 이거 뭐 아니 뭐 아니, 뭐. 본인 올라프로 올라간 거 아니에요? 올라프로 올라갔지 이거 뭐, 이거 뭡니까? 아니 상태가 좀안 좋았어 <웃음> 잠깐 아니 그래서 나한테 물어본 거구나 아나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나
이거 이두 개만 가지고는 모르겠는데요. 저거 마지막 공격에 음. 어떻게 보면 얻어 걸린 것 같고. 어. 아니 저거는 그냥 버튼 누를 줄 알면은. 버튼까지 <웃음> 나왔어. 근데 지금 19분에 내 포인트 이거 981원인 거부터가 어. 말이 안 된다. 근데 그래도 또 아이템 센스는 있는 게 음. 라일라이를 봤어요. 어. 라일라이 장점이 이제 세라핀 이한 방에 바로 쏙박 걸리는 게 장점이란 말이야. 아, 나 근데 왜 이렇게 아무 거 보니까 왜 이렇게 좀 익숙한 종류가 나지? <웃음> 왜, 왜 이렇게 클테면 같지? 아무 건가? 다음 분위기를 마치는데 또 맞춰놓을 거 바로 빠지거든, 플레이스 타고. <웃음> 이런 거 보면은 제 티어는요 다이아로 할게요. 오 다이아 다이아로. 다이아만은 어. 오른쪽 저렇게 오원딜 조합 나왔을 때 이미 같이 나요. 스타 정글이 나올 리가 없어. 스타 정글이 난난 닿지 않아던데. 아니 근데 그렇게 치면 여기도 이상한 게 여기 오레이피야. 그런데 근데 어떻게 이겼어? 어떻게 이긴 거야? 지금 여기 오레이피야 여기가 더 쓰레기야. 오르트 모드 이런 건가? 이거 아니 뭐 내전하기 뭔가 내전. 저는 전 브론즈로 봅니다. 브론즈 브론즈는 아닌 거 같아. 브론즈는 아닌 거 같은데. 왜냐면 용합해서 스킬 연계가 된다는 것부터가 의외로 높을 수도 있다. 이거는 내가 봤을 때 제작진의 함정입니다. 이건 다이아 이상입니다. 오케이. 오, 아, 이게 다이아 이상. 저는 좀 예상을 해보기에 어. 트리스타나가 어. 다찌를 유도를 했는데 음, 음. 실패했습니다. 어, 약간 이런 거를 유도를 할수 있는 게임은 음. 최소 플래티너. 정답은 아이언입니다. 아, 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 아 다찌를 누군가 해야 된다니까. 이제 아이언은 안 하지. 어. 아이언 받긴 했어. 제보자가 수빈님이에요. 아, 아 수빈 아나운서님이요? 네. 음. <웃음> 어, 세라핀 사인공 너무 좋았던 것 같기도 하고. <웃음> 이장만 자체만 하면 챌린지였어. 눈은 기깔나게 어. 맞추더라고. 하나는 정말 네. 진짜 잘한다. 오. 오, 이건 티어 높은 것 같은데? 아, 어, 티어 높은 것 같은데? 일단 비행고 움직임이 좋았어. 근데 이거 약간 챌린저 느낌 같은데? 나는? 이거 엠비션 아니야? 그럼 그런지. 오, 딱 어디로 올지 알고 싶다. 아, 근데 이거 어. 좀 높은 거 같아. 나 이거 어디서 봤어? 이거 높은 거 같아. 이거 높은 거 같아. 이거 높은 거 같아. 이거 어디서 봤는데? 꿈에서 봤어? 아, 나 유튜브에, 나 잠깐, 나 이거 맨 마지막 장면에 보서 봤는데. 근데 이게 진짜 비에보가 보면은 음. 게임 센스가 되게 좋거든? 음. 가면서, 그러니까 탈은 저 구멍 한번 빼주고, 음. 여기 들어가서. 어, 여기까지 잘했어. 근데 여기까지는 음. 티어 정말 높다 생각했거든. 음. 근데 그 다음 비에고 공이 좀 에바였어. 어. 어, 거기서 좀 티어가 그렇게 높지만은 않겠다. 어. 약간 빈틈이 어. 보인다. 어, 빈틈이 빈틈의 실이 좀 많이 보였다. 그러니까 아, 어. 옛날엔 잘했는데 요즘은 나이 먹어서 옛날 짬밥으로 하는 그런 느낌이 어. 되게 많이 났어요. 그래서 좀 살짝 피지컬적인 부분으로 아쉬운 부분이 있었다. 그래서 다이아. 어. 다풀 구간. 근데 네. 다이아면 다이아 하이 거니까 무조건. 단딱이다. 어. 어. 아, 나 이거 좀 고민됐는데 챌린저라고 했는데 이게 음. 만약에. 찬용이 형이던가 어. 동진이던가 나오면 프레임만 어. <웃음> 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 어. 보면 은 어. 일단은 마스터 그마 이상으로 어. 될것 같다 요 정도 느낌이 다이아 게임 이상에서는 충분히 음. 볼수 있다고 생각하는 그림이어가지고 어. 어. 마스터 이상으로 마스터 쳐볼게요 어. 마스터 어. 저요? 저도 한 마스터 보겠습니다 약간 찬용이 형 느낌 나는 것 같은데 정답은 다이하고 네. 공진님입니다. 아, 네. 미사일가 저거 잘 보긴 했어. 이거 더 어울릴 거 아니야? 아니야, 이거. 아니, 이거 아니, 아니, 의식을 아니, 하고 했어. 아닌데, 아니, 내가 그래서 바로 가서 나와가지고 아니, 깜짝이야. 아니, 너 켰던 거겠지. 아니, 아니, 보면은. 이거 그거네. 미러네, 아니, 미러네. 아니, 미러네. 아니, 미러네. 아니, 미러네. 아니, 미러네. 아니, 미러네. 아니, 
Welcome back, everybody. We are here for the second matchup of the night. It will be T1 up against Fred of Rion. I am Valdez. With me is Chronicler. We are still in quarantine. We will be out next week. Don't you worry. But that does mean that we get a nice uh, remote broadcast edition of the LCK tonight. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get that done yesterday. But today, we got it, Chronicler. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling peachy. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling very good. My quarantine ends tomorrow was well. I'll finally be free again. I get to cast some League of Legends with Veldas. It's it's wonderful, truly. Um, I might feel a little worse after next series because that's gonna be a, that's it's <laughs> it's gonna be a rough one. I'm I'm very afraid. Yeah. That's the expectation, but we will have to wait and see how the games actually play out. Let's take a look at the points of the match. T1 defeats the undefeated, uh, that was Genji, of course, versus the only winless team, Fred of Brion. So T1 can defeat a team that has never lost, but can they defeat a team that has never won? Chronicler, what's oh, your take? Dif difficult question. <laughs> and uh, I think it's a really interesting discussion to have who's better, T1 or Gen.G. Obviously, T1 won the best of series or the best of three. Um, but I, I think those two teams, regardless of where you stand, are in a league of their own as the two best teams in the in the league. And for Fred Abrion, they are the worst, right? They, they have less going on for them than teams like Hanwha that have just looked kind of uh, lost on the map as well. Less than Nongshim and Kwangdong teams that, that still have moments where you're like, ah, oh, this team can get it together. Uh, the individual play isn't there. The team play that allowed them to make playoffs last split was just not there. I'm happy Gamin is starting because it's a challenger's player, but uh, he's up against Gumayushi and Karia. So I, I, I don't... <laughs> I, yeah, I, that's still not going to be great, supposedly, um, because it's it's just such an uphill battle for Broke. Eyes on Zeus and Owner, the godlike rookie duo. I think Owner has really taken a huge step up. He was already really fantastic, but now he's kind of shining brighter, if you will. Um, just really awesome stuff. Zeus was obviously already insane. The star players of the four versus five team fight against Gen G, which they did win. At 400 Pog points, the highest in the team, the both of them. And uh, yeah, I mean, certainly there's a lot of positive things to say about T1, and we will uh, be saying a lot of them for sure during this match, especially because... Oh, no. Um, yeah. Oh no! I mean, if you never win, then like you're not gonna yeah, have stats, to, right? So we had we had to pull the, the stats. Is. Yeah, we had, we had to. Unfortunately, as there is uh, no better way to show the shape that Fred Brion is in. There isn't even the Fred Brion revival that they used to be so known for, where as you get into 20, 30 minutes, you slowly see the gold lead getting smaller as they get towards their comfort zones, where they can find a decisive team. None of that this split. Uh, they have tried a variety of different lineups with Sword, with Umti, with Raptor, with Hanna, with Gamin, and none of them thus far have really worked. And I, it's not impossible for Fred Abrian, I think, to refine themselves in round two and at the very least end the split on a higher note. But I don't think that that is going to be the case against 2 1 here tonight. 2 1 is just off of a colossal win on Gen.G. <laughs> And the team is looking more and more like the team was in spring, and that is a uh, a dangerous thing to face, even if you're in a great space as a team. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of been the goal for T1, right? I mean, they won spring LCK, and in pretty dominant fashion, even though Genji were able to pick up the one game. Um, still a pretty dominant victory. They did go to MSI, they made it all the way to the finals, they made it within one, ga one game of winning the MSI finals. And now for them, essentially the goal is just to keep up that that tempo and keep up that form and make it even better going into Worlds if possible. So for them, it's kind of just riding the wave and trying to improve as a team. And, you know, for them, obviously they want to win another LCK title. If possible, that will be the first goal before any international stuff is considered. And so for them up against Fred at Brion, you know, you could just see it as another stepping stone. It's going to be up to Fred at Brion to try to change the way that people consider the matchup. And 
This was the threat of Brienne of Spring. If this was the threat of Brienne of last year, there would be some believers. Some people would just be spamming uh, Robomento and Lord Morgan emotes, but there would be uh -huh. a part of us that truly could believe. And the biggest issue for Fred Brian uh, it, it has been the individual performances. Uh, most notably, the uh, Lava and Umpty. Because Lava and Umpty were the beating heart of Fred Brian around last year. Um, and Umpty often was responsible, as uh, he still is, the guide and, guider of the team. <laughs> so he makes sure. Yeah. Uh, sort of well, and uh, in addition to that, Lava had a legitimate claim as a top half mid laner within the LCK, and that is just nowhere to be seen this split. And we've seen teams like T1 and like Gen.G show that laning dominance can turn very easily into all around game control for Fred and Brian. They don't even get the chance to really play the game because the laning phase is so rough already. <laughs> Aww. Those are uh, tickets for Freda Brion games. She says, I will come to the matches until you win. <laughs> and hopefully after that as well. But she will be uh, there every single time. So hopefully that powers up Freda Brion as the key player matchup will be the jungle. As, you know, a lot, a lot of the T1 fans were like, well, why doesn't Owner get some more highlights? You know, he's fantastic too. And really the answer was basically just because everybody else was really good. <laughs> and he was in a team of, of stars, but he's, as I said before, you know, he's shining brighter now and uh, he's doing really well. Whereas Umpty, he's got some good numbers, I suppose. But again, you know, as we always say with kill participation stats, it basically means that Umpty's the only one that's doing anything. Um, and even he isn't having the same kind of play level that he has had in, in past seasons, as you mentioned. So, um, <laughs> will be an interesting matchup in the jungle for sure. Very tough one as owner, as per usual, uh, looking like an anime villain, jacket over the shoulders, as he always does, mm -hmm. has been the kind of uh, cornerstone of this lineup together with Zeus. We have seen them be incredibly consistent, and, and uh, it's interestingly enough, it says a lot about the standards that we have for T1 that we're like, their bot lane's not as good as they normally are right now, uh, because they're still really good. It's just uh, we've seen the levels of plays that are available, and then for Gamin to come up against Guma Yushi and Karia. Uh, as I said, relative to the form that we've seen of them, you might argue that right now they're not looking super hot, but uh, that is relative. Absolutely, they are still <laughs> extremely strong, and facing them is really, really tough, especially when you're just fresh off of the boat in Challengers. I know I talk a lot about pace, and Vital Lost Bit was really good as well, but that doesn't really stand toe-to-toe -to, -toe to the LCK 80 carries. Yeah, that is very true, as uh, there were some funny signs. The one that I laughed at was actually, uh, he's going to hold his breath until uh, Gumi Yusi gets Pog. <laughs> that was a let's win today for the Brian sign, the very scary uh, kind of animal. And we'll have to wait and see what does happen as uh, T1 have side selection for this matchup. They are going to select the blue side. And... We did just see some interesting drafting in our first series. We had a fantastic game number one. Game two was a little bit less fantastic. It was more just Lucian gaming. Um, so we'll see if Fred Brian mix anything up because you were talking about the individual performances. I think their drafts have also been pretty lackluster. Agreed. I don't think they have a full read on the mana. I, I think that they just, well, they're gonna ban Seraphine. So <laughs> maybe they're trying to leap forward into the new meta. And that was the one pick that caused T1's only loss of the season, uh, especially with, uh, as mentioned, their really big win over Genji. Um, only Kwangdong, the most unlikely of heroes, unless you go far enough back into LCK history, uh, <laughs> uh, was able to, uh, to actually take down T1. And the Poppy ban has kind of risen in priority as uh, most notably Peanut, but Pioshik and uh, to a certain extent Umti as well have been picking up a lot of cash that is a that that's a clear sign that they expect uh t1 to maybe go for a jungle priority here and then you pick up lucian and then you don't want gumi yushi to play draven is my assumption 
or you somehow get the Zeri, as I have. Uh, obviously, it's B1. No, I don't. I don't know why I expected anything differently. As Zeus is <laughs> very happy, sword mildly bewildered, as I'm sure we all are at the NAR priorities being still as high as it is. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that We've accepted it, it is great, but it's not first pick. You know, first ro second rotation, like first first phase of picks. I'm I'm down. I'm fine. Um, so they're gonna get Wukong in here, and then they're going to pick the counter for Nar in their minds, the Sejuani. Uh, this means that they're just totally forgoing Lucian and Nami. They just say no. We don't want to play that. <laughs> we are not a fan of yes. Lucian Nami. It is Do not a owner. thing. Uh, which means that now Gumiusi is going to have his chance to play Lucian and try to do what Ruler just did in the last series. And that's a gauntlet thrown. As Gamin looks, I don't know if he looks happy or scared. <laughs> Maybe both. Maybe both. It's Elvis. both. It's, it's both. like that. It's the it's the nervous chuckle. You know, like <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> and oh man, this is really scary for him actually. In the previous, well, uh, uh, considering how his last series went, I don't, I don't think that Gamin is, is really, in a weird way, is feeling any pressure because it's going to be very unfortunate if you get demolished here by Gumiushi and Karia, But also, no one expects anything else, uh, and maybe this time you get to at least play the game a little bit and not get uh, level two ganked by Trundle, uh, which still possible. Uh, <laughs> owner hasn't locked anything in yet, but. Yeah, what we do true. see here is uh, is the Samira, which uh, um, is one of the picks that in theory can stand up. Early laning phase obviously going to be a little rough as you're just going to have to accept that the waves are going to be shoved into you as you will generally be paired with either a Rel or Leona. And as I say that, of course, the Rel and Nautilus have been banned away. Leona just not in a graded spot at the moment and her telegraphed engage can be a problem uh, to go with the Nami. Let's so go to Alistair, Tom Kench. No, no, def, no, I'm Kench. not on board. I'm, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, you know what? Maybe do that. Do it. Do it, Delight. Yeah. It's going to be Rakan. Uh, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about any of the other chairs, because it's Delight. And That's true. Yes. Oh, the Belveth angle? Yes. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm down. You have we're, we're on board. so much pressure. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't know why they keep playing with us. First, the Ramus, And I know the Ramus wasn't real. But Dalvov could have been. What a world yeah. it could have been, Felvis. They're just slowly getting closer to real to, uh, you know, to trick us once again. But yeah, I, I think that T1, obviously a very serious draft. They're taking this very seriously. They want to make sure they win uh, in swift fashion. The answer was, or the question was, what is Faker going to play into the Arias? Mumu is going to be the choice Ooh, okay. here for Delight. This is not with the Kalista. It's just in a Mumu. And, you know, he's got a couple of bandage tosses to help himself out, but uh, loses a little bit of power not being paired with the Kalista. Yeah, main issue is that there is no way out anymore. But the Frederian comp doesn't believe in a way out regardless. So I, I, I think that actually works very nicely for them as... It is very clearly a composition that's designed to dive very deep, very aggressively into enemy backlines. And I'm, I'm holding off until we hit the 20 seconds because either we have a swap uh, bug um, or we're that actually looks like a going... swap bug. It's really, I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I actually don't. It's I don't teleporting Knight it. Wukong top like, OK, yeah, I'm on board. Sure. Okay. Uh, try I mean, to try swap. to punish the nar. There oh, we go. It okay. did swap. Okay. We're good. We're good. Because uh, it is, as you're saying, very risky. As the T1 comp, uh, if they get ahead, they win the game. We have seen this happen literally <laughs> not an hour ago, and it will be the exact same this time around. Uh, for Fred Abrion, the spikes are more uh, rallied around the level six. Really strong skirmish and. If you can get a lead, especially against the T1 comp, then I actually really like this draft, but getting a lead is the hard part, especially against T1 if you are friendly. Well, we'll have to wait and see, guys. Let's hop onto the rift for game one. I'm 
합니다. Here we go. Once again, match 40. We are almost done with the first round robin, actually, before we do get to the halfway points. That will be in the middle of next week on Friday, where we do hit the halfway point of the summer season. It's already going by so fast. We'll yeah. have our teams at nine games apiece, and we'll Crazy. see where everybody kind of lines up. I'm I'm thinking about what the big surprises are of the first half of the split, and I know it's sandbox, but I'm I I, I got to be very honest with you, <laughs> fellas. I still I still find it hard to believe. I've been hurt so many times before. I remember last year when they were set to make it in, um, and then Summit and Croco had a moment, and it was not a good moment. And uh, mm -hmm. things can change a lot, because look at Fred Abreon going from a team that, despite all odds, despite having to win some extremely hard matchups at the later point of the season, they were still able to make playoffs. And seeing the kind of flounder like this is, uh, it's just kind of sad. This team was such a pleasure to watch last spring. Yeah, I think they still have it within them. Um, the, the... The issue, though, is that, um, you know, like we're saying, it's, we're almost at the halfway point. You, you're running out of time. We had in one of the key points that actually if they do lose this match, then they are secured 10th place for the first round robin. And that's not going to be a great look for them. It's very unfortunate that they've, they have not won a single match, but also they have T1 still and the Nongshim. Um, Nongshim, I suppose, an equally floundering team, just a couple of steps up. Maybe they can get something going against them, but uh, I'm not too confident in this matchup. I'll tell you that right now, right though. I, I don't think, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to say that Fred Brion have a great chance in this one. As Umpty is just going to go around that word. He is Wukong, after all. Oh, nice angle here. They have Yamumu. Yeah, they're going on in. There's the Ignite. Guma is definitely going to have to flash. He flashes straight into the Bandage Toss, and that is First Blood given over to Gamin. And just like that, you know, that ward, like I said, is not going to see the Wukong. Really big moment. Very nicely done there by Omti. And this has historically been the start of many many a win um for fred abrion which is umty finding early presence this time around it's gamin getting the kill and in this matchup matchup especially that is very very valuable great use as you pointed out uh and yeah guma and, and Karia feel very safe they have both owner in the area and they have a ward but um don't get the crash get taken down instead really crisp timing there uh from from umty very very nicely done and it all goes back to that war that was played there earlier from Fred Abrian because that's what allowed him to know that there wasn't a ward in the brush and they could go for that play. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you pointed it out. That's going to be a huge lead here for the side of Fred Abrian just to get that first blood down on the bottom side. Like you said, you have to get ahead with this composition from Fred. It. And uh, this is one step in the right direction. As I'm excited to see Faker on the... Uh, okay, it's going to be a gank coming in here from Delight, who is very active on the map now. After that, Faker almost looks um, <laughs> insulted. He's like, wait, you're not allowed to come to my lane. Um, but yeah, Faker back on the LeBlanc, and he's up against... I mean, he's a fantastic LeBlanc player himself, but he's up against Lava, another great LeBlanc player that we have seen here at the LCK. And the LeBlanc is... Slowly rising again as owner back in on a ward there, so they will know that a ward is there, but um, not going to be able to actually get his back off, which is going to give Umti a little bit of a lead. Is still a camp behind, um, as Umti, of course, did spend a little amount of time actually going, but with a successful gank, you'll take that. And as mentioned, the level 6 spike for Fred Abrian is incredibly strong if you look across the board. There is Sword who gains the ability to actually pressure Zeus a lot more uh, when he has ultimate available, double permafrost. There is the combination of Umti and Lava diving in deep. And I, I overall really appreciate the Fred of Rion comp because as you pointed out, they have had a lot of difficulty with actually drafting cohesive comps. And this might this comp might completely fall flat because I do uh, see a, a, a lot of risks in how you use ultimates 
um, overextending into, into Guma, into Caria, uh, blowing too much on someone like Owner or Zeus. But the comp is cohesive. It's very clear what it wants to do. Everyone goes in, and putting yourself in a position where your win condition is very clear when you're a team that's losing this much, I think is always going to be a safe bet and something that Fred Brian recently hadn't really been able to figure out. Yeah, it's definitely nice to draft that kind of composition. I liked when they were going for stuff like Camille, Cali uh, Camille Gallio in the past, yeah. just because you kind of press your R buttons. And everybody has to go in, otherwise you're going to lose. Um, but they started not having as much success with that as well. So there's a nice ward down the lane here. T1 is going to spot Umpty in position in this brush. As it looks like owner is nearby. Oh, yeah. And it's just gonna be the back way of in. Might be trying to bait it out though, because they did not actually have vision within the brush, so they don't know if Auntie's actually back. Might uh, reach that conclusion now, and I think uh, all that owner really wants to do is just make sure that they get the shove, uh, and then they can get a back in. There's no objective on bot side, and. Not really any expectation that uh, Fred Abrina is going to try and contest here. Might even help to push for a play. Ooh, that's a nice chunk of damage as owner comes in and Gamin just goes across the lane to somehow go down very late. And finally, Delight is going to pick up the kill here onto Guma, but it's still a two for one in favor of T1. They also pick up a plate and a very successful gank comes in with the bubble. Easy ass and Gamin, unfortunately, not flashing the bubble. Uh, really nicely done by Owner as well to follow up on the gank. Uh, once we see the replay, you can see how he utilizes the uh, setup there to, uh, from Carrier to ensure that he actually gets the hunt to zero on the uh, Samira. Because this is definitely a bit of a risk you're taking with as many summoners as still available as there are. But post six, it gets a lot worse when the Crystal the Seven are, are available. So, really good play there from Owner. Uh, nice punish, good read, and as a result, gold lead, uh, as perhaps should be expected, uh, heading more favorably towards T1 again. As yeah, this is a, a disaster of a lane state for Zeus. I hope owner helps him out a little bit because uh, Sword can definitely do with that as he likes. Yeah, you see the lane state here. There is a massive wave, and the second the bubble hits, owner can just easily set up the wind becomes lightning and flash that one in. Uh, Guma just barely does go down to the follow-up E there from the Amumu. Delight picks up the kill as now Sword. Kind of being baited into this one. That is going to be the Gnar straight into where owner was lying in wait, and this is a super free kill. Umpty even on the top side of the map, maybe that's part of the reason why Sword was playing aggressively. As he is now going to hide in the brush here, Faker getting a little bit frisky, 1v2, that's going to be Umpty going in. Now we got Lava coming in from the tri brush. He is going to shut down owner here, and that means with no jungler on the side of T1, Ripria can go ahead and take this one, but uh, they're losing an entire turret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm glad you caught that, because uh, unfortunately it is in the end a one-for-one -one trade, because you trade Sword for Owner, which not amazing. Nice setup there by Fred Abrion on the Collapse. But you are losing, I think it was three plates, might end up being four by the end of it. Uh, and that's not a, that's not a good trade that is in fact unfavorable to you in terms of overall gold. And yeah, they're not gonna be able to get the final plate at least for now, but uh, the expectation is that Fred Abrina is gonna just get a crash and nothing more as Zaya sets up very nicely. Your sword in general is a little, little risky as he is very low on mana. Even in a 1v1 scenario, it might've been in trouble, but feels safe because uh, uh, Umti is in the general vicinity. And then this teleport from Lava actually works out very nicely. I'm not sure if T1 actually spotted that one. Um, so Lava able to use his ultimate to close the distance. And then due to the rotation up from Gamin and the Light, they're able to get the Herald. But it does cost them a lot of plates. And the gold lead is still there for T1. Yeah. Looks like Owner didn't use his Crescent card there. Just uh, knocked up until he eventually got charmed. And of course it is Ari and Wukong, so... <laughs> Good luck uh, denying them entrance to the Crescent Guard. So, just elects to go down, and his team does benefit 
uh, at the end of the day, as we have talked about. The Rift Herald tier is going to be in the hands of Umpty. We'll have to wait and see where he does decide to drop this one down, as there was one plate taken by Lava so far in the main lane. Could be an option if he wants to try to pressure Faker out a little bit. But so far, based on the way the trades have been going, it has been quite even. Faker maybe taking slightly better trades, as a LeBlanc can do. Yeah, ideally, you try and find a dive, but with your, the state of your lane at the moment, as you pointed out, Faker not really getting pressured. Gumi, you should carry out on the winning end, so uh, they're not particularly bothered, and as a result, actually setting up a dive and getting a first turbot is very, very hard. As possible trap being set up here, owner. <laughs> Moving around vision and getting Krugs will get spo or uh, will get spotted now, but still going to be able to get Lud Umpty. I'm loving this. This is exactly what you want to do ideally. A spread of Rion, no teleports available, but there isn't really a wave. Yeah, Rift Herald is coming down here. So now 4v2 with the Rift Herald. There is not a wave, but there is a Rift Herald to tank. So you can see that Guma and Karia Gonna put down some vision, they will respect it for now. Gaming able to pick up that last plate, and in fact the Rift Herald will get some nice value here for the side of Freda Breon. Try to even up that gold. No dive, nothing like that, as the light is getting way too close to the sun. He's taking a huge chunk of damage there, just trying to push in the wave. And uh, could have cost him his life, but he will be okay. And not only are uh, Fred Abrian able to get the crash there on the Herald and deny uh, Gumiyushi and Karia some access to their turret, but they also, and this is very important, pick themselves up the Mountain Drake and uh, stacking up these early Drakes with a composition that is very adept at finding around objectives is a, is a really big win for Fred Abrian. Uh, it is T1, so by the time that the fourth drake spawns there are barons on the map and uh, well, well, just the one baron but t1 really uh -huh. enjoys uh their cheeky 20 minute barons and that's something that you're gonna have to keep a very close eye on uh although it is hex sword hex sword incredibly strong very very uh, valuable regardless of setup do you think that the fed of Brian comp doesn't necessarily use it as well as some other comps that's Faker. why you go merc trades everybody by the way <laughs> yeah if you're really scared, if he go gets hit by as well. Yeah, true. I mean, you just want to make sure that you're surviving. LeBlanc can do enough damage even without sword and boots. It's just a good purchase in general. Lava has been looking okay. You know, he's set up for that first gank on the top side. You mentioned that he has been kind of a, a sore spot, you know, comparatively to his level of yeah. play in spring. And uh, just hoping that he can kind of reach that level once again. Just want to see our teams do well. And there's always going to be... Oh, there's a, that, that, those were justified zoom-ins. <laughs> uh, that was a lot of them. And they do know that mm -hmm. owner is here. I've not actually made it... Oh, look, the sweepers. Ooh. They don't quite find out. Oh. And now playmaking potential. Sword has TP as well, can go in 12 seconds for a deep tp when unsealed spell looks available Auntie is gonna show uh, here we go delight is taking a ton of damage though he's just barely out of the range of the culling and because the engage was a way too early it means that the rest of the team cannot follow up on it it just kind of allowed guma to get free damage in and nearly kill the amumu so just like Another that lose. you had an opportunity and it's gone and this is where I think uh, the oh, Faker. Faker. He's trying to make a play here on the Wukong. Umpty in a bit of a rough spot. Zeus is also flanking in. Owner is getting in. That's a huge cyclone. But he is eventually going to go down here as the uh, ultimate here from Sejuani will land. But Faker, he's surprisingly tanky throughout all of this. They don't quite have enough damage on Bro to get through his health bar. And that will be a trade up here for T1. Uh, yeah, and that is uh, off of, as you pointed out, a play that could have been executed very differently. And that's where a lot of the losses, I think, really show is being too fast to pull the trigger. The advantage that you have in terms of knowledge isn't really going to go anywhere. As we're going to take another look at Faker, knowing that his jungle is on his way, he's not afraid at all. So going in there uh, does with a large amount of confidence. Oh, flash oh, around to make sure he shows his W. Yeah, 
It's really clean stuff from the side of Faker. He does not panic at all. He actually sets up the kill and the collapse from his team. And now T1, they're just going to go ahead and take the second Rift Herald. Doesn't look like Fred and Brian want to fight over this one, as they should probably try yeah. to set up for this next Drake that is coming up in about 20 seconds instead. I really hope they can get the Drake, because if not, their comp is looking like it might fall apart to a certain extent. Not because I don't think they can't win fights, but just with the state that this team is in at the moment, Lava does have teleport available, so we'll be able to join in a moment's notice. But, yeah, as you pointed out, it has just been a very, very rough time here for Fred Abri on the 2k gold behind. Do have a really strong team fight here where they can get backline access. Guma and Faker need to be locked down here, but Say is currently sitting on Meganar. Is going to time out. Fred Abri and they're all here. Yeah, pretty nice setup for them. You see that T1 are having a little bit of trouble getting vision over that wall as they don't have it in the pit, but they know this is started anyway, so... Slowly pushing on in. Faker gonna check this now as you see Owner is putting down the Rift Herald mid. So they're just gonna give this one away as the Boomerang does come in and T1 are not looking for the fight over the Dragon. They just want to zone them away from the mid lane. We'll see if this actually is worth it in the end as everybody from the side of Fritifreon is coming on over. T1, they are looking for the fight. The Crescent Guard gets a lot of value, but in goes the rest of the team. Owner survives for so, so long though as they are eventually going to take down three on the back side of the fight. Freda Freon forcing it through the choke, and they will get punished for it. And unfortunately, even though they get the kill on Owner, they invest a lot of taking him down, and he was just bait. He's not the important member. Gumayushi throws a full calling in. Faker can just deal as much damage as he'd like to. And as a result, uh, the Freda Brian play to, or the T1 play rather, to give up the dragon into Gross Comp is really smart for a number of reasons. It's definitely a high risk play because if you make a mistake later and you give over a Hextech Soul, it becomes very, very hard. But look at the setup here, right? There is an immediate tidal wave that comes through. Uh, Guma, Faker can just freely do damage, and Zeus is free to charge up his Narbar. And Freda Brian all funneling into a choke point. Um, not working out quite well, would have been much better if they just took the long way around, they didn't want to give up the mid-inner. But T1, uh, choosing to go for that uh, is good, because with the gold lead that they have now, as long as they don't mess up on the next Drake, and someone gets randomly picked off, you are going to win that fight. So the soul point should never actually lead to anything for Fred Abrion, because the gold lead is going to become so big, especially with the amount of gold that they just injected into themselves with that mid lane play that T1 can just decide what happens, and there's four men looking for Faker on the block, which is <laughs> not very yeah. easy. That ain't it. I'm going to say that. I don't... Uh, we've seen so many players get out of that exact position. A Cyclone has to be used. There's the charm as owner. He's so tanky at this point. I mean, he has a Gore Drinker, Merc Treads, and two extra Ruby Crystals. Like... It's not really going to happen, especially with Karia right behind him and the rest yeah. of Fred Abriad not even committing to the fight. They're like, well, we don't want to do that again. And T1, they're just one 3 one They have the three guys in mid with Guma just getting the farm. They have Faker top, and they have Zeus spot. And they're just spreading out and trying to put on the pressure on the map. And there's nothing for Fred Abriad to do here, because even though their hard engage is really, really good, they're already so far behind that uh, your engage needs to be on point. You need to hunt it to zero someone, because otherwise you are still going to get taken down. And yet yeah, T1 are just going to pick more and more and more as Lava gets bullied away. The rest of the team is there for reinforcements, but overall this is looking very tough for Bro. And then look to the side lane, right? 50 CS up for Zayus. He's absolutely smashing his 1v1 so you're winning that one obviously faker is very fed uh, and guma is kind of self-explanatory we saw last game what happens mm. if, uh, if if lucian gets ahead so for fred abrion you can't one for one so you need to try and force but t1's vision control has been super good so where do you force who do you actually collapse on it's a very slippery team from t1 here yeah it's a pretty good question uh, we see the builds here from Faker. He's going full AP. It's kind of what Toby did on Azir. <laughs> As uh, LeBlanc, a little bit more standard to go for this kind of just full AP. You want to burst people down that don't have any magic resist, which at the moment is everybody except Ibumu. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, 
So and, yeah, and they're not going but to. Yeah, especially though the Ari and the and the Samira, of course, just gonna look to try to one tap them and just push them away, as the LeBlanc does. Yeah, it's it's tough because itemizing against Faker feels like a loss as well, because you have Fat Guma and Owner and Zeus that are both really really big, so so you kind of forced to, but you can't. And as expected, 45 seconds on the clock. T1 has so much control that the transfer threat of Rian to actually cash in on the soul points is basically impossible. And this two-man unit of owner and carrier just rotating between the side lanes uh, and mid is, is it's really nice. It's a textbook game from T1, honestly. And Fred Brian need to find an opening, but that's so much easier said than done when your opponent knows your every move. Yeah, I mean, it's something we talked about in the draft, and even here, it's just very textbook, very slow. They're respecting Fred Brion 100%. They're yeah. like, who knows? These guys could pull out a crazy fight. You know, we don't want to take any risks. And that's uh, that's what you got to do. You got to be disciplined if you want to win as often as T1 does. As in comes Fred Brion. That is a big title wave. Only catches the Sejuani, though, and that's going to be Zeus getting 100 to 0 as Faker comes in from behind, but it's a little bit too little too late. Owner goes down, and now Guma's left all alone. Fred Brion came in as 5, and T1 were split up as 5, and that's going to be 3 kills going to the side of Fred Brion as Karia is just out of here. Uh, just taking another angle as that should be Hextech Soul now over to Fred Brion as the term comes in. Faker not able to steal that, and that is a 22-minute Soul to Fred at Bria. And five minutes ago, Valdis, we said, play that T1 has gone for is good, but it's high risk. And here we see what the risk is. The hard engage that this team has is really, really big, and it is a uncharacteristic mistake. Zay is just straight up getting caught the light, finding the bandage shots, and if any part of CC lands this comp, it's a circus comp, as uh, Atlas would, uh, would dub it. There is so much CC, so much team fighting power. And as a result, uh, that's the one mistake you couldn't make if you didn't want to give over Hextech Soul and for Fred Brian, is this enough by itself? No, but it does show that the composition still has a lot of power and Gamin, especially with a soul like this, can really pop off. Uh, if you do this at an elbow in five minutes time, and still lose his game too long. Uh oh Guma does have cleanse though, so that's going to be extremely valuable against the Sejuani. And yeah, I mean, in a team fight, Fred Brion's comp, you know, they can just kind of dive in. They can try to pick someone off and just 100 to 0 them as they did in that last fight against Zeus. Uh, for the side of T1, I feel like they now, especially, they it's going to be difficult for them to just straight up fight. They might need to pick and pry and, and get Faker in there to poke a bit of damage onto the Ari, you know, maybe get some poke with the Culling from Gumiusi, maybe even just try to side lane because. You know, as time goes along, even though Fred Brian are still down 4,000 gold, the Hextech Soul is going to get so much value in this uh, map. And we touched a little bit about the Samira and, and what it provides, but into a short-range composition like T1, they can do so much. Oh. Look at Lava, what a setup there. He's going to find Guma as he flash. Ult ends, gets the Everfrost down, and now the rest of T1 once again just left out to dry. Faker all here alone he's got now. He actually hops back in the distortion, and that's going to be Zeus knocking him into the tower. Are you kidding me? That was perfectly angled. As even Jonah Strong can't believe it, he zooms in. He's like, wait, that's a wall. <laughs> perfectly done by Zeus to make the best of an unfortunate moment. And the troubles for Guma continue. Uh, as we said at the top of the day, he has been underperforming relative to the level that we know this player individually has hit. He was one of the hallmarks of a T1 win in spring. Extremely consistent and just gets picked off here. Uh, as you point out, beautiful setup by Lava. Not afraid at all. Uh, flash charm. Rest of the team follows through as Fred Abrion does. And the downside, of course, is that they do dive here, so the health bars are very, very low. And as a result, uh, T1 is... A, that's a beautiful escape from Faker. Uh, really pranking everyone there is yeah, going to take a yeah, look at that. And Faker then also able to uh, help and okay, get cool. that kill by okay. the end of it. Yeah, as Zeus, uh, okay, and okay. the rest of the team chases. Okay. And... 
Thank you. Thank you, says Faker, <laughs> who is now sitting on what I hope will be a match rise. Not yet. Uh, but he's sitting on eight stack dark, uh, eight st eight stack dark yeah. seal. And as mentioned, Fred Abrion, they're not going to itemize MR. See, Sword has gone pretty close and hard. A lot of value against T1. Yeah. But Faker definitely has the potential to steal 1v1 in this game. And even with the Hackstack Soul, Fred Abrion is 4k gold behind. But there's a chance, Valdus. And that's more than I was expecting coming into tonight. <laughs> Certainly thought this was going to be a bit of a stompy series, but Fred Abrion making it interesting so far. Uh, it does feel like, though, 3-0 and 2-Faker might just have the tools uh, to make it work here. As they're yeah. constantly tracking him, they're they're pinging him on the map, you know, but so far they haven't been able to deal with him at all. They have tried to take him out now twice. One time he set it up himself, the fight that is, um, but he has gotten out alive both times, so uh, really just stacking up the damage. You can see now he's going to pick up the blue buff here. And, yeah, I mean, Fred Abrion, like, a different team that was a bit more confident, because I feel like Fred Abrion, you know, especially at this point, they really have lost yeah. a lot of confidence as a team. I feel like that's one of their big issues. Um, a team with more confidence, they might say, hey, guys, we, we have a great team fight comp. We have Hex Tech Soul. Let's do something about it. You know, let's set up vision for... Uh, the Elder, let's move in together, let's try to get this Baron, let's try to bait something and make something happen. And I'm glad to see that finally they are moving in at least for this Elder Drake uh, vision clear, because uh, I was being driven a little bit mad by them not doing too much up until now. As Faker, oh, really nice use there, uses his Sweeper to go in, sees on T. And this time around, on the fourth to lose this one T1, as that will be the Elder. Still very far ahead in terms of gold, though. Mm -hmm. Meganar. It's now available. There's a charm, but really just trying to push them. But it's a bit early, this Meganar. It's still 25 seconds until this does come up. See the poke is oh, coming in, they're just going. trying to, yeah, <laughs> just trying to posture here, Boomerang gets a lot of value here, just trying to slow them down, take down the frost armor, but oh, Zeus is not in Meganar. Slowly pushing in, you can see the vision is there over the wall. Here comes the light, he's gonna get the Gnar again! Zeus has a stopwatch this time and the damage is insane from the side of T1. They burst him down, Guma gets a double. And this time around, Bro will not get away with it as double teleport to mid lane. It looks like T1 wanna end the game right now. And a decisive call. Uh, it felt like last time where Zeus got caught but T1 learned this time he gets caught on purpose. Has to stop watch ready. The Velda's favorite item coming through Clutcher is owner almost dies to a turret. He doesn't care. They're gonna shove in here. A decisive call as per usual from T1. Who get a clean ace off of what looks like another mistake from Zeus. Works out very nicely and it looked better. I'm seeing smiles on Fred Abrian's face and I think they've earned them, but still not enough to take down T1. <laughs> Yeah, as Faker looks like he's got stuff to say there at the end. A very casual LeBlanc victory from him. A lot of escaping, a lot of tricks, and and just cool stuff that he did show off there. Certainly my pog for this one. And uh, yeah, just slow and steady. You could tell that T1 were not trying to risk anything. Now, it wasn't a perfect game. There were some moments where you know, Guma got caught a couple of times, Fred Abrion were able to take advantage a couple of times, but at the end of the day, T1 were the better team, and they got the one team fight that they needed to end this one. Fred Abrion made them work for it a little bit, and that in of itself is going to be a big fan uh, for the Fred Abrion team, who at the very least look better than they have in the first couple of weeks. Um, that is not going to be enough. That's still not meaning that uh, we can see them take wins out of nowhere. But overall, uh, that has better, been better than they looked over the last couple of games. The light in particular, glad to get the zoom in because his Amumu was really, really big. 
Unfortunately, that final fight was all just an elaborate bait from T1, and he fell for it hook, <laughs> line, and sinker, as that is incredible hard work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Correct. He bandaged Tost <laughs> real hard yeah. and uh, just casually topping damage from Blanc. It's no biggie. Yeah, just uh, again, you know, it felt really casual. <laughs> it kind of felt like Faker was just like it hanging did. out. He's like, yep, this is another game for me, another solo queue where I can just kind of slowly win this one out. I don't believe he died up until the end of the game. So it should be nope. a very clean KDA when he picks up that player of the game. <laughs> um, and yeah, slow and steady. There was a, a couple of dips there on the gold difference graph, but uh, T1, they were the better team at the end of the day. So pretty straightforward game number one here, guys. We're going to take a bit of a break before we do get into game number two. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっ
나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나나
a successful fight here for Fred at Breon around picking off Zayas because previously, right before this, we can only have a few highlights here, but previously before this, they failed to actually get the NAR and then were unable to win the subsequent team fight. This time they had a better setup. They cut through really quickly, identified the NAR bar positioning here, and it showcases just how much CC this composition actually has if it can be utilized together. Yeah, exactly right. And this was the sole point as well. Like this was the, the actual pickup of that Hextech Soul that you were talking about. This was a big opportunity for Fred and Breon to find their way back into the game. The problem was they were losing in every side lane and even though they're able to pick off the Na there who is a vast portion of their front line considering the fact that it's a Nami support, things like this. Yeah. Um, they don't do much if there's not that big Na in the front line. It was looking like team fights should be won by Fred and Breon. But then let's go to our final replay here and see what happens when a certain item is purchased. The six. This is the oh. Valdez highlight. He's the POV of this one. Is look at how low Zayas gets here and then is of course able to stop watch. Then escapes, has Narbar, can re-engage. Doesn't matter because the fight is already won by Kumusi just hitting a million autos here. But all, the, every fight was about Zayas uh, in terms of whether he was instantly killed or if he survived. Because every <laughs> yep. resource was used on him, so Gumusi was untouched and had full damage there in that last fight. He certainly was. Uh, Gamin also decided to um, sort of vault his way into the very back of uh, the enemy uh, team, which was not really the way that you were going to win out that fight. However, that's sort of what Samira has to do in the majority of situations, right? You're going for that S rank. You're trying to get all that AOE damage down, and then even if you die, the rest of your team can theoretically clean up. However, that is um, not how it worked out in that case, and they were just that little bit too far behind in yeah. that instance as well. I, I just really want to talk about the NAR pick that we're seeing so many teams prioritize. Yeah, really. first, first pick, pick in this draft. First pick in this draft, and like you can play it strong side, you can play it weak side, you can win team fights with it, you could draw aggro with it, you buy a stopwatch, suddenly you're immortal. It's, it's a pick I think we're going to see continue to rise. Maybe even it ends up going to those first band rotations if it keeps being popular. We're seeing top teams prioritizing it so highly right now, especially T1. No, absolutely. Um, it was prioritized pretty highly in our last series as well. Got through in game number two, but was banned in game number one. But did get to the second round. But I think different teams are going to have different priorities on this pick. But you can imagine Zayas very happy to pick it up. And T1 have demonstrated that when they get all of these comfort picks, it is very difficult to take them down. And speaking of being difficult to take them down, let's have a look at the POG as it's difficult to take down Fakers LeBlanc. 5-0 and 4. Oh, yes. 70% kill participation, 2,000 gold, 2,200 gold, the leader at the end. Only its second POG this season because it has been a bit of a Zayas show and owner yeah. show here for T1 throughout a lot of this. But look at this play in particular. This was the, the biggest one. This is the one where you had his first person view where you follow Flash's Umpty over the wall here. Yeah. And also I mean, getting behind the clone in order to yeah. mimic charm, like that was that was very. And then sad. this, where the fight looked lost and doomed, and then Faker is able to survive with his clone here, go and trick uh, Gami, and then go to the other side where they then turn the fight on the sword. Uh, while Faker is shot calling the entirety of the fight as well, we heard in his comms. So yeah. Two votes do actually go over to the jungle side here um, from the Korean analysts. Um. Yeah, Simona votes. I mean, he did have a pretty good game. Yeah. Um, however, I think that uh, Faker was probably uh, a little bit more impactful in that game. Leadership, also just being able to dominate lane and then find ways back into the game after losing Hextech Soul, which did look a little bit dicey, but the entire time you're looking at the top of the screen and you're like, well, I mean, they're still 5,000 gold ahead, so they're probably going to be able to pull it through. We'll see whether they can do that again as we move to game number two. So here are the casters. Thank you, Carpet Spacemen, for your fantastic breakdown there. As, uh, yeah, Faker did not die, did a bunch of damage, led the entire team. He was certainly the uh, the leader of the charge here and uh, the forefront main guy of this game. So good on him. We'll see if Fred Upriang can kind of recreate some of the successes that they had on the blue side this time. And it's a tough ask, uh, provided what we just saw, where it was a T1 that even with, as pointed out, some of the mistakes that they made individually, never really lost control of the game. Uh, even when the soul was taken, it, it, it really did feel like a moment where, like, 
Oh man, that, that that's unfortunate. Anyway, let's move on and get it over <laughs> yeah. with. And they did. And and that is in a matchup where the teams are as far apart from one another as they are here. Uh, unfortunately, somewhat inevitable. Great Lucian ban. Big fan. Don't uh, hey. even though Guma did the, the best <laughs> of games. Uh, I I I I'm still on board with banning the champion because it means it means we might get some interactive gameplay. As I say that, Seraphine hasn't been banned yet, so I need to be a little bit careful. Uh, <laughs> again, I don't think the Callista is ever making it through uh, for Fred and Brian, but they're going to keep going mm -hmm. with these Draven bands. Although, with Amumu taken off, maybe they're happy to leave it open. Interesting. Very interesting, for sure. Um, as Wolf was talking about on the carpet space, you know, the Amumu certainly was a very nice touch towards the end of Fred Brion's draft, and T1 will throw some respect to Delight's way with that ban, as, uh, of course, throwing it at the combo as well. Here's going to be another Zeri ban. Not going to let that one hit the rift once again. Uh, Zeri has been deadly for pretty much anyone who has been able to pick it up, as Samira also going to be banned away here. So lots of 80 carry bans, lots of stuff you don't normally see, which does leave Ooh. Seraphine available, leaves Wukong available. And they will lock it in. I was expecting a Callista pickup. I really would commend T1 or recommend T1 rather not to pick up Callista here because the Ash support, if the Light has it in his arsenal with Seraphine into Callista, is not a very fun matchup. <laughs> if you go Senna Yasuo, though, you have none of those issues, Valdez. You take away the Senna, so no Senna Seraphine. And and Karia's going to probably play Yasuo, so love it, T1. Thank you for the entertainment. Great opening here, and uh, Yasuo is also genuinely very good into the Senna, or into the Seraphine, rather, because of you having yeah. the ability to get rid of the uncle. Yeah, you have a very nice ability. It is a wind wall. It has a very long cooldown, but if you time it well, you can get tons of value out of it. Also, just the hard engage and the ability to access a backline that Yasuo can have, uh, as long as he does have some help from his teammates, can be very threatening oh. to a squishy backline. But immediately, Fred and Brian are going to respond with Gnar and potentially Wukong. So they're going to take away the Gnar. And now we're looking at Callista. So Callista is going to be picked up here, actually, by Fred and Brian. New Gragas here, surely. Gragas is both a pick, uh, the AP variant specifically, that we've seen piloted successfully in Zanar. Uh, oh, okay. well, that's also a great pick for the Yasuo. <laughs> I was expecting him to yeah. uh, uh, prioritize that. Would not be surprised to still see Freda Brian uh, throw a ban towards that, because we know how good Zeus can be on the champion. And for Freda Brian, the Seraphine mid is something that we have seen pulled out earlier tonight. Mm -hmm. It's a pick that still very strong. I don't think it's as strong as the AP carry Seraphine because the composition does substantially change uh, with the Seraphine in mid lane, where she does get a lot more levels. But um, you also lose out on some of the early prio because pre a couple of levels in your queue and lost chapter, you do get shoved in. Don't have a lot of threat going for you. And T1 can also still flex a lot. Uh, it, it's not like we are yeah. locked into this Yasuo being bot lane. And the 1v1 nope. in mid would also be quite hard to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. As we are going to see a couple of support bands that could go with the Kalista. Uh, T1 certainly thinking that the Seraphine is going mid and not into the support role. The Gangplank and the Gwen going to be banned away so that Sword can have a little bit easier of a time. Um, but we are going to have the brothers hitting the rift, Yone. Also picked up, as Zeus had a very cheeky grin, and I thought he was just going to play Silas, but instead, it's actually Yone and Yasuo bad chest. Well, we, we don't even know what's going where. Cause, <laughs> Doesn't <yeah>. matter. <laughs> I, there, there's, there's a lot that T1 can do here. The, the things we know is that it's probably going to be Guma playing the Senna, and it's going to be Owner playing the Diana, but... Uh, the place where this Yasuo, this Yone go, my expectations is Faker on Yone, Zeus on... Okay, hold up. Now I'm, now I'm getting confused. What? There is... There, there, okay, I, don't, I don't think this It's obviously this Lee Sin for Carrier, right? 
Well, that is a possibility, actually. We have, yeah. <laughs> we have seen uh, the, the, the Yasuo Yasuo top or the Senna Yas or the Senna Lee, like, rather. Uh, the reality sure. is that until everything gets locked in, we don't actually know, so we're going to wait. And uh, now we speculate. <laughs> now we speculate, because... There, there is no way that Faker's playing like Diana mid, right? Like that, that's not happening. But you'd expect no, I think owner he'll to play, play Yone. But yeah, but you'd expect owner to play Lee. So is it bot lane? No, no, no. Carry is playing Lee. It is going. It is going to be Lee. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah so uh, like, I, I just when you have owner on your team and you're not using him to play Lee Sin, even when it's Carrier. Um. The fact that T1 can do this is a uh, question. Well, I don't, we don't know if they can do this. That remains to be seen. They've done it. Uh, <laughs> whether the they question. are going to get yeah. away with it is, is another. Uh, but definitely a fun draft here from T1. Uh, very all-in. Very, if we win, we absolutely demolish you. Um, but the Fred Rian comp, I think, much more well-rounded. Has a really strong team fight. A lot of pressure lanes, looking a lot better than last time around. Is still going to be reliant on finding those big level six spikes where a lot of these team fighting ultimates become available. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, should be in for a fun one here, guys, as it is Faker on the Yasuo. Makes a lot of sense, actually, on second thought into the Seraphine. And Zeus on the Yone. So anything goes, I'm always happy to see Karia playing Lee Sin once again as well. So. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Game number two. Let's hit the rift. And here we are. This is real life. Uh, I know some of you might be bat testing out of control. It's okay. <laughs> I understand. And yeah, um, always questions to be asked, you know, like T1, they showed a lot of respect in game number one. This draft doesn't really um, ooze respect, if you will, you know, they certainly are freestyling a little bit, um, to put it lightly. And yeah, they might still win. Doesn't mean that this is a very viable comp. I think they're having a little bit of fun and um, this could be Fred Brion's opportunity to just say no. Like, we're just going to draft standard. We're going to use Seraphine, which is really strong right now. And just try to beat you straight up and punish you for this. Um, or T1 might just be that much better. In which case, they might just win anyway. There's a lot of questions going into this game, Valdas. And uh, I'm sure some of them will be answered. Some of them will not. And we will remain seeking, like how does T1 actually rate this draft? Uh, but that is a uh, problem for future <laughs> us. Uh, talking a little bit about as we have five precision, that should be yeah. that should be an achievement, <laughs> you know? Like, and, and uh, we hitting all of them. We got we got lethal tempo, we got conquer, we got fleet. Um, no one went PTA, which oh. I don't see anyone that could have. So I, I, I guess that's a great choice. Um, well, anything is possible if you really want it, but I don't, I don't think anyone should have. Uh, but the T1 composition uh, gets uh, an incredible amount of power when it comes to skirmishes around the map uh, due to their consistent backline access and the power of a lot of the old combos that they have, plus the sustain from Guma, as it was carry out uh, like a year ago yep. as well against the Liv. Remember Summer Effort? That was a, that was a good time. Live sandbox. Uh, oh, Guma. Summer effort. Yeah, he's just gonna have to flash here. Bit unfortunate for him. He also did use exhaust onto Gamin, so that just means that uh, okay, no summoners here for the Senna. Very easy for Fred Brion to pull that off. Delight, once again, getting things started for his team. And also continuing the struggles in lane that uh, that have persisted somewhat for Guma. Auntie is looking for the punish. He was able yep. to do it. They're just going to go straight up the lane here and try to get this dive down. Gamian is very low, though, and he picks up first blood, but he's also taken down immediately as Karia, level two, level three now, actually hits that perfectly. 
as he will try to get the follow-up right over the wall. Very clean, and there's the Ignite. Karia picks up one kill. There's the Triumph. He's looking for another one as the Q is going to land on to Umpty. you got to be kidding me. Can he get this kill? The answer is no. Karia very close to picking up three on the back end of that fight. And by the end of it, it looked really, really cool uh, for T1, or for Fred Abreon, rather, as they set up that dive. It worked out for T1, or, um, yeah, for T1 last time around. Not the case for them, unfortunately. Gamin, crucially, going a little bit too deep. Uh, not the guy that you won the tank. Uh, unfortunately, even with the flash, gonna go yeah. get taken down. And then the skirmishing power of Lee is something we haven't talked about as much. Obviously, these are the type of scenarios where champions like Lee uh, and, and the same if he gets skirmishes on top side between Zeus and Faker. Uh, it, it's just going to reign supreme. And while all of this is happening, Owner can just farm to six. And as Diana, if you can skip your lackluster early game, uh, you're feeling peachy. The timing here is a little bit off as the wave has already been mostly pruned. Uh, and Duma hits a very early uh, W uh, on the light. And yeah, again, I, with the light having flash especially, uh, he should not be. Oh, Gami, uh, Gami rather should not be the one tanking. As Karia flashes as well to make sure that he gets the kill. Very close to picking off that last one as well. As we're not seeing total vision here. Generally, that means that Jonas Strong is trying to hide something from us. As here comes Owner. He's level five. So, yeah, just. <laughs> Just saying hello, pushing in the wave, helping him out, and maybe just trying to push to get priority on this drink. And that is exactly what they will do. They'll pick up this Infernal at 5 minutes 20. And Infernal on uh, uh, a team that is five defensive champions, pretty great. You'll take that. Uh, that that's a huge win. Gets a lot of, uh, of stats. Looking like a mountain or a um, possible cloud soul. For Atlas here, or Ocean. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if anyone gets excited about Ocean. Um, as... there, there are, you know, it's a very small percentage of the population, but I hear that um, some people do get excited about the Ocean Soul. Are you an Ocean Soul enjoyer? Uh, not, not myself, no. Not um, personally. Yeah, not, not personally, but I, I, I do, I, I have met some people that are fans of, of Ocean Soul, yeah. So it is a thing. Here comes Round Umpty. Two. Yeah, and they are looking for um, nothing, uh, apparently, as Delight takes a giant chunk of damage before the fight and dive even goes off. Maybe even saved them by <laughs> trying to stop the dive there. As oh, no. you are backing on Vision, but uh, there is Gami in here, and that's going to be the Attract Repel, but Karia does not care. He's fighting through the exhaust, and he's going to be taken down as Guma. Uh, not sure about that second mouse click after the kill, as maybe he clicked over the Dragon Pit? I don't know, that was very strange. Um, either way, that is going to be two kills over to Fred of Freon. T1 did not have to do that, hmm. but they did. No. Unfortunate situation. Here you see what I was talking about earlier. Uh, for Lava, this matchup is not very fun. Faker has a very nice free setup here. And Lava is able to clear the wave if he's actually allowed to walk up. He right now has the backup, so he actually can. But uh, in a 1v1 setting, that is a very, very scary scenario. When you know that, especially in a wave, Faker has a really easy time just blowing you up. Um, and as a result, uh, we do see that the rest of the team is providing assistance and top lane, meanwhile, um, says is farming and will until he hits at the very least the ship bow. Possibly two items and then uh, maybe we'll get to see some action. And that play from Carrier kind of confirms what our suspicions were, which is uh, this is a Carrier wants to enjoy himself type of game. Because <laughs> that earlier he play was did. great. Getting the cancel here is fine. Getting this damage out is fine. And then the moment he goes into that rush, he might have thought that Garmin uh, went for a back. He definitely didn't know. As I, I, yeah, maybe Guma like maybe he's trying to get the fun. stack. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. He's like, well, he's I'm like, dead I'm gonna anyway. die anyway. Yeah. 
You know, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this by T1. Uh, get get some of your uh, your cookie drafts out. Uh, not cookie cutter, but cookie as in crazy. And uh, cookie, yeah. have some, yeah, do some do some limit testing. Right? Again, if you don't do it now against Fred Brian, you never will. And maybe down the line, this is the draft that saves you. I don't, I don't necessarily yeah, see I it. I don't think so. Working out that. <laughs> hey, I'm an optimist, Valdez. Yeah. I believe. Love it. Uh, uh, here we go. Umpty's going to get a massive combo alongside a delight. Three people knocked up forever, but then Faker returns the favor immediate Nar into the wall. But will it matter as the Encore gets totally blocked by the wind wall? And that is exactly what we were saying. The Seraphine has zero value as everybody from Fred Epreon gets in the pit and gets pummeled into the ground. T1 pick up four kills and the Rift Herald. Oh, that, that wind wall was about to time out. If that hits, they win the skirmish. If that hits, everything might be fine. Yeah, you lose Herald, but who cares? You win the subsequent skirmish. But they don't. And, and I'm loving... This is a really good engage from Umti and the Light, but there's also no damage at all. Uh, one sword comes in, it becomes a little bit better. But I want you to know how long this wind wall has been here. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like half a second more. If lava actually gets that off, they win the they win the they win the scrimmage. Um, Zeus and owner immediately die, and maybe you can get yourself uh, someone that's more yeah. fed. But lava really try. I don't not seeing the wind war, or trying to time it uh, the moment that it timeouts to give them less time to respond. But if you do that, it, you need you need to hit it. You can't afford to throw that ultimate at such a pivotal moment into a wind wall because uh, that's probably the game ender right there that now t1's comp has a colossal lead they got mid lane turret so seraphine's going to be completely stuck underneath her own mid lane uh gonna be perma threatened and shoved in by t1 and t1 can just take everything snowball the lead across to the other lanes uh and completely run over this game yeah <laughs> It's kind of funny the way that that goes sometimes because everybody's probably played against comps similar to this in solo queue and if it gets ahead it quickly turns into one of these games where that team doesn't always win but there's about 7,000 fights and that team always is looking to fight um t1 have a little bit more restraint <laughs> than your average solo queue team that's for sure as it is going to be cloud soul by the way um, but they still have the lead as well. So when they're ready to go, they can press their buttons and probably just blow up that back line. Like, Seraphine is not tanky, obviously. The Callista is not tanky. If you don't have those two, you don't have any damage. I mean, I suppose Wukong and Nar maybe, but like, it's going to be nothing compared to what T1 has. So uh, good luck trying to keep your back line alive is what I would tell Fred Brion, because if you don't, you're gonna have no chance. About that chance. Uh, no, you, you know how they often say that, uh, uh, you know, like life imitates art or, or art imitates life or uh, something of the sorts? Uh, I can guarantee you that this is the most authentic Korean solo queue comp that I've ever seen. This is, this is what it is. <laughs> this is what it feels like uh, for T1. And uh, that's the comfort zone. <laughs> Right, that's what you're playing for. And if we look at the actual comp and like how, how it works out, there is obviously so many ways to enable uh, Faker between Karia's kick, Owner's ultimate, and Zeus's ultimate. Zeus is also going for the tankier build, which means that they have someone that can actually utilize the Senna sustain and provide a lot of safety, as I'm pretty sure Sword is dead. Um, yeah, he is yeah. Uh, super dead. He does not have flash, no hop available either. Owner is now 2-0 and 3. He had, um, obviously, double hop. He's got proto belt. He had flash if he needed it. <laughs> Doesn't even have to use his ultimate ability here. Just a clean kill. And Karia just solo on the bottom side. He's just going to back away. It's now Faker. He's not playing LeBlanc this time, but he is going to tether onto Lava. There is the second Cyclone, and he is dead, alone in the river. He gets taken out by three members of Fred Brion. Oh, that could have been really sick if he got out, but he didn't have flash, so uh, there wasn't really a way out for him, even with getting his ultimate off. Uh, 
Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Zeus is getting uh, a turret, so it is not a great trade, all things considered. But as Fred Abrian, you'll take anything that you can get, and uh, you did get a kill on lava. So, uh, provided that he can actually... Wait, he had to flash just now. I don't know what happened, but uh, that can't be good. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 like... Not sure. Th th uh, uh, we haven't even talked really about the Diana, because Diana in a situation like this actually gets so much more value because with a lot of AP junglers, one of the issues that you do run into is that unless you're really, really fed or you're allowed, like in this game, to just perma clear, uh, you can be somewhat lacking in terms of damage if your enemy uh, itemizes AP is, yeah, sort of dice. I don't, and, uh, I, I don't want to pay too much attention to that. Um, this is a little bit cheekier as, as Caria was hiding out of vision and Faker, I think, maybe rotating to trying and save him. If he has flash here, then possibly he makes a grand escape, but uh, not really any ability for him to get out there with four, men, uh, four people there. But uh, to, to finish the thought, AP junglers, when you do have a really heavy AP lineup, is really good, uh, or AD lineup rather, uh, allows you to snowball way harder. Uh, if you do, wouldn't even mind if he picked up a Dark Seal and itemizing for your opponent become a Nightmare and uh, T1 can win through like four different ways now because you have Guma and then you have Owner <laughs> and then you have Carrier and it's just a, it's just a lot of ways. But Fred Abrion, even though they're five and a half K gold down at 15 minutes, they will group and they will fight. And a big Encore can turn anything around, Velvet. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Certainly I can. Do you believe? Yeah, I, I do agree. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh. Let's see. Uh, Lava has a crown. Owner has a really nice flank angle, though, as they are going to get on top of Sword, who is Meganar, but not that tanky. Finally, he is going to get into that Meganar. The kick comes in as they're trying to get the seal, and that is a massive three man double ultimate to come in from T1. And there's even some fight back from Sword, but it's way too little, way too late. Oh man, T1, they just are styling on them. This is like the Harlem Globetrotters right now. They're just picking their favorite champs and just going to town. It's not fair. I don't get that reference at all, but I, what is happening to Fred and Brion here? It's very unfortunate, Velvas, and I can only assume that your, your analogy is that as, oh, Caria gets a number of kills. Zeus is monstrously fed. Um, and you see the composition there. Uh, owner just walks through like three people. Caria gets a kick. And then Faker ults. And then that's the end of it. And no encore and no amount of damage, uh, which Fred of Real really is lacking. Uh, unless they get perfect setups or not from behind. Neither of which have been a reality this game. Um, just create a really really in a fortune situation but i'm sh this is gonna make for a great highlight i can tell you that as yeah that is a flash <laughs> three man oats and lava actually keeps them alive as as does sword for a little bit longer here but zeus isn't even in the fight um really but, uh, uh, until the point where everyone's already dead only hit his ultimate and then snapped back so, uh, he was there lava. to secure the kills yeah yeah, he's definitely very fat now. Um, okay, okay, okay. They did lose Howard. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't picked up. That's but something. That's yeah. that's lackluster from T1 right there. They could have had Harold as well. Could now have they're been only better. now they're only seven and a half K gold and three dragons up. Yeah, could yeah. have been eight. Yep. Could have been better. Unlucky. Um, <laughs> That's where we are, no, owner, isn't it, Valdez? <laughs> it really is. I mean, there's not too much else to say. Owner just made that look so easy, too. Um, as Guma's just playing around here in the mist. He, he found, like, the perfect angle, taxied onto Sword, hopped in with the Flash. Like, it was, it was actually just perfect. <laughs> found found the, the sweet underbelly. The weak side is, is Zeus. Yeah, he's going for the kill. This guy is dead. So wow. dead. And actually, Guma picked up the kill. So after all so that, Zeus, you're not allowed to get 
even more fit. It's actually just illegal. As here comes Umpty. That's going to be an Encore that's totally just missed. But Zeus does have to hop back here to his clone, trying to get a little bit more health. But now he tries to turn onto Lava, as now he's got Caria around. He was going to miss. Everybody is super low, and you just know that Owner is licking his lips, looking for those kills. As it is going to be actually Zeus dying in the end. <laughs> and he does not care. He does not care. <laughs> Oh, he goes down after all. Unfortunate scenario as, uh... It's, it's a shellacking, Veldas. It is not surprising. Um, I, I'm, after game number one, where Fred of Britain was able to somewhat stand, T1 said, let's get a draft where we can really style on them. And then they did. Uh, Zayus not gonna get the kill here as Guma is providing some, um, quote-unquote, assistance. Really nice uh, dodge there from Zayus <laughs> on the Encore, and that's what allows him to uh, go, get back in, actually get the knock-up on Lava and turn it around, and then, unfortunately for both Lava, uh, there's nothing to be done there, as Zayus just didn't didn't need to tank that turret. Carry out with full health, but uh, he, he tried to, to anyway. save him. <laughs> he he did, to he jumped to him. To him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Say, and please no. Four so for the now nobody on the s <laughs> nobody on the side of T one is is deathless now. Unfortunate. Who do you vote for for POG here? Because I know Karia's having a great KDA, but I I uh, don't. I, owner. Yeah. Definitely I, an owner for me. I I I I I, I, I honestly don't know. Um. I guess. I guess it's owner. Might be Zayus as well. He's also playing very, very well. Picked up a bunch of kills. Hit some great nah, ultimates. he just benefited off of owner's engage. I mean, yeah. he, he's definitely playing well himself. Uh, what about <laughs> Karius so, having the most fun? He's having the most fun. He certainly wins that award. He has a fantastic setup here as Gamian is going to survive for longer than expected. That is another huge owner in Kate. As the Moonfall comes in, the damage is extremely large. As now Faker is looking for his own fun on the backside. Probably not going to find it, actually, as he has the wind wall. It doesn't do much. As Gamin finally goes down, and Zeus is going to clean up the mess that is happening here in the base. As Sword, pretty large, but they have the damage. That is a Meganar into the wall. And can they actually kill them? They can't quite get them both. As Zeus is unkillable on the backside of this fight. He will finish off the ace here for T1. 13,000 gold to lead. And T1, I don't know if they can end it here, even with the Baron buff, but uh, they still take down the inhibitor at 21 minutes. Oh, it's a Zayus moment. It's a Yone moment. Zayus also notably going for Blade, but then still going with the Shield Bow, which I really like, kind of a hybrid between the styles that we've seen before. Um, Gamin surviving for uh, Gamin surviving for this one is very funny. As uh, I don't know what to tell you, uh, Valdas. I, I really want to do a breakdown of this fight, but it's 20 minutes in. T1 is, I think, 11k gold up, and they they can just do whatever. They don't have to care at all. Uh, they are monstrously fed. A really, really clean flash Q there from Zayus. And even with Sword hitting Mega and slamming both of them into the wall and an immediate crash down, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, the damage reduction on, on those. On, on, on the. <laughs> oh, <comment. laughs> Not quite enough. Not quite enough. They got Saw as well, yeah. which is nice. Wow. Cloud Soul to top it all off. Maybe they'll wait for the Elder. It's only six minutes away. Here's Caria. <laughs> there is almost Meganar, but the second you don't hit that engage, you're leaving. And Fred Brian very intelligently will do exactly that. Saves has teleport. If they really wanted to force it here, they could. He is going to teleport into mid. And just wait for the fight. And you know that T1 is going to make a fight happen. They only have 20 minute, uh, 20 seconds on this Baron buff, so definitely gonna oh try no. to make it happen before then. You'd have to imagine. Mini Or they could just back away. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, I didn't think they were going to. But everybody is going to dodge that one. Here comes the crash down. Delight trying to make this happen, but he only finds one as he does get space called in the backside. But the Wombo Combo comes in and a giant safe of gold smashes Fred Freon's head from the top side. And it does crash down on them completely. Another ace here for T1 as they are going to end this game in 23 and a half minutes. They absolutely demolished them. It was not fair. It was not pretty. And T1 will go home with the 2-0. And the less that is said about that game, the better, Valdez. Um, it was a complete outclassing across the board. It is not a surprise given the current form of these two teams. Um, but it is, it is definitely, definitely a very fun and happy moment for T1 as they all get to lock in the win. But yeah, look at that. Yeah, I'm sure you're getting, you had a good time, Zayus. You got to play here. <laughs> you didn't even have to go tank Yone. Only went for Blade and then went into full crit and IE finished by the time the game was over. And overall, um, simply a complete demolishment uh, of, of the Fred Abreon uh, team. And unfortunately, not too surprising as uh, the Thunderbolt comes our way. Yeah, uh, Zeus certainly uh, smacked him with his Thunderbolt multiple times in that game as that's a really cool space bar and maybe he's just trying cool to show off the sponsor i'm not sure exactly uh this says please win t1 don't worry you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to be worried about that anymore especially in this matchup not a close one as you said there's there's not a lot of uh, analytical depth in that second one it was just uh one team that is many tiers above another one smacking them down as I believe that was Faker's parents. Not 100% sure on that one, but did seem that way. Maybe we can get a uh, clarification later. They certainly came down for a fun one today. That's what I'll say. <laughs> and uh, not too long of one, you know? Sometimes if you're not a League of Legends person, you don't wanna, you don't wanna get the long best of three series. You want the 2-0 Smackdown. And uh, they did get that, uh, especially in game number two. And for Fred Abreon, um, game number one gives a lot of food for thought, actually provided you with, with some learning moments. Uh, as, as you can look at the setups, you can look at the execution of some of your plays. This game though, I don't think there's anything to be learned there. Um, there was points where the difference in individual play is just too high simply to, to really take away anything. And that was, this was one of those games. Uh, individual execution was way too good as, yeah. That is a really nice option from Owen. Three man immediately uh, then knocked off by the Faker and, and Zeus. And the game was kind of over before this. It was definitely over after this. And uh, T1 from that point on, just having their merry way with the map, uh, taking every objective, every Drake, and every single play that they could dream of, which with these type of comps is, that's what you want to do, right? Like this is why you pick a comp. And that's what it did. Yeah, that play on the bottom side from Zay is really um, impressive, for sure. I actually wanted to see the entirety of that fight, but uh, it was a little bit too long, I guess, to fit it in the highlights. There were, in fact, so many team fights. I don't know if uh, team fights is the best way to put it, <laughs> but uh, skirmishes, clashes, I'm not sure. But uh, there were there were a lot of them. This one was also really cute. Zay was coming out with a double kill as owner sacrifices his life, takes the majority of the damage, saves oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> by the end of it. And I think he's going to have a really sick engage here, I'm not sure. Yeah, he yeah. yeah. uh, kind of kills everyone, but so, mm -hmm. the rest of his team. Um, as, I wonder what T1 is saying here. Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not a little bit of game. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, that was really sick. That was, that was really fun. Looks fun. <laughs> I think Guma said it looks fun. Because <laughs> like, he was the one, of course, playing Senna. To make this comp, you know, some 
semblance of a of a <laughs> of a real thing. As uh, yeah, this was one of those games where the damage and the numbers didn't necessarily matter all too much at the end of it, other than the fifteen thousand gold difference uh, by the end. As uh, Carrie actually did a lot more damage than I thought he was going to. Big numbers. He 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 was brawling a lot, so I, I I'm not too shocked. <laughs> Uh, decisive victory from T1, as expected, coming into the nine. And for Fred Brian, that game one, that might provide some uh, some handlebars. But game two, best to forget about that one as soon as we can. Yeah, uh, the expected result in the end, the 2-0 from T1 tonight over Fred Brian. That's going to do it for us here on the cast. Hope you guys did enjoy this episode of the remote broadcast from Valdez and uh, Chronicler. But uh, either way, guys, we do have the Carpet Spacemen ready to go. Let's hand it over to them to break down that game number two. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I very much hope that it's a limited series and not an ongoing television show. Um, I don't want to see the next episode. I want you to be at this cast desk, uh, the one that's like kind of over there, actually. But let's get into this game. Uh, I personally kind of don't think that it's uh, all that worth analyzing because it all just um, went to hell in a handbasket pretty quick. But let's yeah. have a look at the draft first. Yeah, I, think it's, I mean, the draft is, yeah. is fun to talk about. The only picks here that aren't really flexible are the Senna and the Diana, although you could argue like Diana could have been played mid, but not really uh, with how she's been changed over the years. But when you have the Senna draft, you have the flexibility to be able to potentially play support Yasuo, support Yasuo. Kerry can play Yasuo, which he has done already this season with yep. Senna. Can play, of course, with Yone there. Less likely than the Lee Sin comes through, and all of these picks are very flexible. They do, of course, end up deciding to play the Yone into the Nar. Great matchup there. Windwall versus Seraphine, very strong. Yasuo is in mid, so can stick to both fights, top and bottom side. We'll be able to get that Windwall value. And Wombo Combos are just the name of the game here. And like, Wombo Combos are so easily set down, shut down by Seraphine's ult unless it gets windwalled every time. Um, also, sometimes shut down by Narbar, but Nar was often isolated by Karia on the Lee Sin. There was a lot of ways Fred Brion could have won this game, but the dives they tried to attempt in the bottom lane were not clean. I think they were very nervous. It's a very weird draft to play into. It's not one you practice against, um, and I think a lot of nerves are high on this roster already because they're one now loss away from having the uh, winless round robin. Yep, and uh, almost perfectly winless as well. They were able to take a game against Home Life Esports, but th that's the only real thing that you can talk about. There is only one win in any column for any champion that you select for Freda Brion, and it's a very sad situation. Um, we haven't seen this for a very long time. In fact, there were some statistics of, you know, some old Jin Air teams, you know, Spenu back in the day, things like this, but we haven't had a team struggle this much for a very long time. It's been time. a few years. Yeah. yeah. And I think Kongu Monster comes to mind as like one of the more recent, you know, terrible seasons, but we're really hoping that Freda Brion can turn it around because even though it was a fun, stylish draft from T1, it was a really sad game uh, from the other Yeah, side. and it's it's hard to mentally recover from this, especially because yeah. their, their last game uh, of the round robin is against Nongshim, which is a winnable series. I mean, all of the series were winnable, right? But it's not like you're facing against one of the big three here in your last series. Like, it is doable. Nongshim have looked very shaky as of late, but you got to keep your confidence up. At least they have the weekend now, the eSports weekend, to kind of get ready and prepare for that final match. Yeah, they're going to have to definitely spend a lot of time trying to cheer each other up. And we know that Umpty has been very good at that in the past, and maybe, uh, maybe it's an opportunity to do so. But let's get into our first highlight here and check out the beginnings of the Wombo combo. In fact, both of our highlights are around these Rift Heralds. As Umpty goes in with a decent try, and like, honestly, everything up until this point, looking pretty good for Fred Aprion. Carry his cute Look kick at to get uh, Callisto away was cool too. Lava on the edge here, and ults yeah. into the wind wall. Straight into a almost dissipated wind wall. Yeah, he just mistimed it, and you know, Seraphine's a relatively new champion, obviously. You're not really expecting to be trying to use your ultimate into um, Yasuo, who's not very meta, especially not in the mid lane. So, yeah, I think just a little bit of nerves here. And if that hits with an R bar a little bit better timed, maybe this is a winnable fight. Um, but I think, again, tension is so high. And T1 did not hesitate for a second. Uh, yeah. They were ready to go in. They were super fast, lightning fast, all game long. Yep. And uh, you can imagine, I mean, 
I think it was very, very close to the wind wall being over. Um, and also, Lava has played against Yasuo every second game in solo queue. Yeah, every game Just of his life. can't avoid it. Um, it. Honestly, this draft from T1 did kind of look like you had that Korean solo queue game where the jungler was auto field support and just played Lee Sin, and then everybody else just plays their favorite champion. The jungle is like, oh crap, well, I guess we should have some yeah, magic damage. You, you and I specifically said if the Senna was actually a Xeroth, then it would have been the complete <laughs> authentic experience. Yeah, like, it then would. it would have been like, oh wow, it's just literally this is it. Everyone's playing their one trick regardless of what support they rolled. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or what right. position they rolled. Let's jump into the last highlight though, is this was the true Wombo the combo. The truest of Wombos. As this is a really nice setup here from Karia. He's threatening his sword because if you could actually kick him out of the fight, this is unlosable for T1. Kicks him forward here, owner, uses him as a taxi, goes in. Bam. And, it's, and then and it's like the brothers combo as well. The flash, oh the flash God. from the Diana, which sets up the first ultimate, the, the Yasuo ultimate, and then the only ultimate is layered on top as Gumiusi ults the entire team fight too, and then hits like a Q or two. And then they chase down the last remaining members. This is what this comp can do. Um, I don't want to even say from ahead, just in general, if it's set up. I mean, perfectly. it only works from ahead, yeah. right? So it ha it has to be and, from ahead. And when you're this far ahead and you can set up fights in your favor like that, and carry us on a support that has so much agency and mobility, like you're going to have power to set up those moments. Yep, you certainly are. And uh, speaking of which, uh, the man who set up quite a few of those moments was indeed the gentleman on the top side of the map. Let's give him his POG. As uh, it will be Zayas that picks it up. 8, 1, and a 11. Demonic and, DPM. Yeah, that is some demonic DPM. And look, even, <laughs> even Yone looks demonic. Yeah. Um, I saw a few comments on Twitter calling him the unkillable demon king himself this time. It's Faker who's usually got that title, but he was so difficult to kill a lockdown this, this game. It was with his lifesteal just doing so much work in each and every fight. That last fight, which we're probably gonna watch after this, as he pushed into the base, is what it comes to mind also this fight, where it looked unwinnable. Then he just casually sidesteps the Seraphine ult here. Oh, we're not gonna show that part. All right. Um, <laughs> then this is the fight I was talking about where he just will not die. He will not be killed. He's like, yeah, no, it's cool. You guys can keep chasing me. You get some hyper proc sword. You got your Narbar. You're gonna push me to the wall. I don't care. I'm gonna knock you up first. Yone's crazy when he doesn't build Sunfire Cape. Yeah, I, uh, I wasn't going to say anything, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, he's going to move up to 500, though. We can't fit all the 400s on our screen anymore. It's Zayas, Chovy, and Prince up there at the very tippy top. Um, pretty close to quite a few other T1 members getting up there as well. There's been quite a few wins going around, and you can imagine a smattering of votes would come through. Surprised that there's only one for Carrier there. Yeah, I thought he media. was going to be at least like three or four. He had yeah. a great game. No, I thought it was kind of an interesting one. Just because his early game was so good, chasing down all of those members after that dive on the bottom side of the map was very, very cool. But honestly, this game was just a bit... It was barely a game, sadly, you know? It's just yeah. that one-sided. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a very strange one. And I, I did kind of like it uh, as far as the idea for a lot of the picks into what Fred Brion had, but it turned out being kind of a pub stomp in the end. So let's go to the interview and have a chat to Zayas and Faker. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jisa for the POG interview, joined by Faker and Zeus after a huge victory. Congratulations, guys. You guys are continuing your winning streak and pick up your seventh win of the split. How do you feel, Faker? You know, yeah, our winning streak was broken in that Kwanglong series, but I'm happy that we are able to restart a new one. What about you, Zeus? Well, I'm proud of ourselves and feels great. Faker, you had another record of your career. You had the LCK first ever 500 kills, I mean wins, and also not right now you're sitting on 2,604 kills here in the LCK. How do you feel about that? I feel so honored to be able to continue making records and I want to keep it going. In game one, we were able to see your LeBlanc, one of your most iconic picks, but this was actually her first appearance by Faker the split. Uh, we decided to play LeBlanc because we needed something to carry mid to the late game. And also, after seeing that Ari blind pick, I wanted to play LeBlanc into Ari. 
And you are winning 14 games straight on that LeBlanc starting from the spring split. I just found out. So I'm really curious about this. What does LeBlanc <laughs> mean to you, Faker? I really, I'm really bad at answering this kind of questions. But I want to say uh, I'm a very grateful champion that made me um, start a winning streak. Zeus, what do you feel about Faker's LeBlanc? Well, I don't really pay attention to my teammates. Uh, other than when I'm playing team fights, I only look at the top lane, so I'm sorry about that. In game one, Freddy Brion was able to stack up so many dragon stakes. Stacks. However, you guys decided to give away the soul and push for the mid lane. Tell me about the decision. The opponents were investing so much to Drake, so we didn't really want to answer that. We just wanted to rotate towards mid. What about you, Zeus? Looking back at game number one comp, we had a very aggressive dive comp completed by Freddy Brion, Sejuani, Ukong, Ari, Samira, and Amumu. What was your plan into playing against that comp? The opponents had too many CCs, so I wanted to go for a lot of durability and also I, I also built for a lot of, you know, items against those kind of crowd controls. So even with all those runes set up and items, I still was not able to survive, so I decided to buy a stopwatch as well. And Faker, we had the shortest game of the summer split in game two. It was a complete victory by T1, and we had a very um, unconventional draft by T1 in that game. Tell me about it. Well, there were a lot of picks that we prepared in screams, and this was one of those. And all T1 players have a very wide and deep champion pool, so we wanted to try something new. Speaking of new stuff, uh, was uh, many of those picks a flex pick for multiple roles? I'm bad at Yasuo, I'm being completely honest, so not for me, for sure. A faker. Uh, there was a voice come uh, on broadcast that you were seeing. It was a very romantic play, just like Leaf Sandbox does. So tell me about the romantic term. I mean, our 5v5 team fight is so cool, you know, looking at our comp. It's a massive team fight comp, and then Zeus was like, by himself, I'm going to go top. So I called him over to the bottom lane, so we were able to have a team fight. So that was the romantic aspect of that moment. I think four of the T1 players were having a lot of fun, but Guma Yusi, and at the end of the game, he was playing Senna, he was like, ah, oh, it was not that fun. So how did Guma react to the victory after game number two? He wasn't saying much, so I didn't really know that he was unhappy, but he could have gotten a solo kill. Down on the, I, I almost got a solo kill on the bottom lane, but he stole that kill still with that ult, so I was also unhappy. Who do you think will win the MVP belt of T1 today? I think owner was playing under a huge pressure uh, given the comp we had in game two. So I thought he would also, he could also win the POG, but he did not sadly, so I think he deserved the T1 MVP belt. Me. <laughs> I want to give it to me. T1, congratulations again for that claim to a victory and your last opponent of the first round robin will be HANA Life Esports. Because that's going to be our last one of the first round robin, I hope we can continue our winning streak and hope it's going to be a 2-0 victory with a great performance. Whenever I watch HANA Life, Dudu is really good at pressuring the top lane, so I should keep my eyes on that and prepare hard for that matchup. And this will be the end of the interview from Zeus Faker, the Yasuo Yone brothers, and back to the Spacemans. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jisun, and it was fantastic to hear from both of the brothers there, of course, the much younger one towards the top side of the map. Yeah, really exciting to see, you know, that they were preparing this. They knew a lot of flex picks available.
Um, also, giving a big shout out there to Owner in that final game. Yeah. His job was a lot more difficult than I think it looked in a dominant game like that. His coordination was definitely good. Yeah, it was definitely good. Let's have a look at the standings to see where this puts T1. And uh, no change. And no change for Fred Abrion, unfortunately, either. Still only yeah. one game win so far this season. We'll see whether next week and their final game of the first round, Robin, is going to be a good one or not. Of course, Team 1, difficult opposition. No team has ever gone completely winless in an entire split uh, of LCK. Fred Abrion, if they lose that next series against Nolchum, they'll be halfway there. Yeah. And uh, I really hope for their sakes they can pull something off. Their next opponents being both Nongshim, but then Damwon Kia, an extremely tough opponent they have had the number of in the past, but it doesn't feel like it's that kind of season. Yep, next week, a very exciting one. Of course, that Harmer Life Esports series against T1 will be the first one. Um, my uh, personal match of the week, Genji versus Liv Sandbox. Let's see whether the romance can continue. And of course, DRX T1, uh, that rematch will happen at the very beginning of round two. Two incredible Big series. Games. Yeah, Chronicler well enough, very likely. Uh, I, can't, I don't want to speak for him, but I'm pretty sure he's well enough to Hope so. Uh, and so you can check this out on his stream. The Challenger split, so very exciting to see some of our up-and-coming LCK players. Yep, exactly right. But that will do it for us for week four. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week for more LCK with all four of us in the studio. I'm not looking down, baby.